fans to watch this game. And for UCLA fans, hopes of a national championship in search of their 20th win in a row. But to drive to the national championship, their road has been anything but smooth. A rocky road traveled through Oregon and Cal with more curves against Stanford and then Oregon State. But finally, they steered clear of upset bids and last week had a smoother trip in Seattle. It sets up today's meeting with an arch rival looking to choke off their travel plans to Tempe. Trying to become the first quarterback in this longtime series to win four games. Cade McNown in his final regular season game at the Rose Bowl. Bob Toledo's Bruins unbeaten on the season, ranked third in the country, second in the bowl championship series poll. It's the 68th meeting between the Trojans and the Bruins. A series that started in 1929, and everybody here to watch it as Gary and I were a year ago in another thriller, but it's been UCLA that's controlled this series seven straight wins. But Gary, over the years, there have been the guys like Beban and Simpson, Marcus Allen, Troy Aikman. What this has in common with those other great games is great stars we've gotten today. Brad, when you look at this football game, it usually, to the average fan, is decided by the specialist, the quarterback, a wide receiver, but this seven game streak by UCLA has not been decided by the glory boys. It's been up front today. Everybody in this stadium is going to need these. It's a binocular game because the offensive linemen are the guys that are going to determine this game. Listen to this stat in the seven games. UCLA has outrushed USC 1300 yards to 800 yards. That's going to be the difference today. They'll try to put that ground game in gear today. Bob Toledo and Paul Hackett, two longtime friends, former compatriots on an assistant staff, head coaches today. Over 90,000, Brad Messler and Gary Danielson along with you. There are stars in this game, though. There's one on offense, one on defense that will clash many times. It'll be the matchup of the day. Can Chris Claiborne match up with the, I think, All-American quarterback this year in college football, Cade McNown? Claiborne will be shadowing McNown all over the field, trying to take this scramble out of the football game. He'll be watching him, trying to keep him in the pocket. All-American versus All-American. Numerous times during this football game, these two will meet. That'll decide also the kind of this football game. The other thing we talked going to break about the coaches, they used to drive to work together right. when they were USC assistants. Who's got the edge there? Well, actually, both of them have the edge <laughs> in this game. They've both been very successful as you look at the numbers right there. Paul Hackett, four and one. Bob Toledo, seven and oh. Something has to give today. I think both of these teams, Brad, are playing their best football of the year for this football game. Paul Hackett, of course, an assistant at USC, as was Bob Toledo. And Bob Toledo, an assistant to Terry Donahue before taking over the head coaching duties. Thus, the 7 and 0 mark. He's never lost in the battle between these two longtime rivals. UCLA won the toss, and they will receive Ryan Rock and Mark Reynosa back deep, awaiting the kick of David Bell. And Rock had a tremendous return game a week ago. This one's fielded at the goal line by Rock. And out across the 20 to the 22 yard line. And that's where UCLA will go to work. Our Chili's starting lineup. The big ones up front to watch for is Brian Polak who's been hampered by an ankle and a knee problem. Meyer Stewart Cabrera and Ferris round out the front wall. Ferris an All-American type candidate. Danny Farmer. Probably will go over a thousand yards receiving today with Brian Pulley Dixon and Mike Greve, the tight end, who had a big game in this matchup last year. Cade McNown, the Heisman candidate. Walendi's back in there starting at fullback. And Jermaine Lewis will share the duty in the backfield with Keith Brown and Deshaun Foster. And there's the numbers against USC for Cade McNown, his fourth game against the Trojans. And it's Lewis off the left side and out to the 28 yard line, a pickup of five. 
defensively and it's a good group. Ennis Davis is really starting to come on in the middle with Williams Larry and Abdul Malik on that front wall. Chris Claiborne one of the finalists for the Butkus Award leads the club in interceptions Gibson and Moreno are good ones that flank him and in the secondary the UCLA coaches say there's the best guy on defense for USC Richard Cook McCutcheon Pearsall and Simmons round out the secondary second down and five Bruins. McNown on first down. Down the middle and in and out of the hands and it's intercepted. Picked off by Zeke Moreno. One play and one turnover. A bit of a gimmick play for UCLA. They tried to send two receivers through the same area, but Chris Claiborne, the All-American, made the play that time. He saw the lob pass from McNown. He made the big hit, and that's what caused the bobbled ball in the interception by Moreno. Watch Claiborne on the right side of your screen. Kane McNown will go back. Lob the ball in, but there's the All-American making the hit and making the turnover. McNown's efficiency rating, not what it was a year ago, and he led the Pac-10 and the country, and he's turned it into the hands now of the freshman Carson Palmer at the 27-yard line. Chad Morton knocked down for a loss of a yard. Barely had time to set the offense and defense going one way. And now coming back the other, Travis Claridge, an all Pac-10 performer at guard with Welch, McShane, Grain, and McCaffrey. The wide receivers, Larry Parker starts for R.J. Soward, who's still limping after two weeks off. Billy Miller and Antoine Harris round out the receiving court. You just saw Carson Palmer, the freshman, making his third start. Morton, the starting tailback with Powell, the fullback. And it's second down and 10. Three wide out grouping. And it's Morton who got the corner. And down to about the 21-yard line, where it'll bring up third down and four. Both of these teams very effective in turning over the ball. That's really been the, the savior for UCLA this year with their defense being so suspect. But you can see both USC and UCLA have turned the ball over, provided stuff for their offense, and USC's secondary has been leading the country in interceptions. They were tied until a minute ago, and that is up to date. 19 interceptions for the Trojans' secondary. R.J. Soward in the lineup now. Will he be a decoy, or will he be a threat? The pass is complete to Billy Miller at the 14-yard line. It's a first down. So it's down in the red zone for USC following the turnover. Defensively, for the Bruins of UCLA, a group that'll bring the blitzes, but they have become a little more vanilla in the last uh, couple of weeks. We'll talk about that later. Coleman, their leading sacker with Webb and Holland. The linebacking core, Ryan Neese, now a starter, the number two tackler with Hall White and Ian Badejo. And in the secondary, one of the best, and a Thorpe finalist, Atkins, with Anderson, Stevens, and Jason Bell. First down inside the 15, Chad Morton. Hit a wall again, bounced off this time, and picked up two. Brad, I watched RJ in warm-ups very carefully. He was running pretty fluidly through warm-ups, but he accelerated much better than he de-accelerated. He could, he could spurt out, but I don't think he can slow down as well. I look for him to be a deep threat or a crossing threat on, on, on passing type plays. The gas pedal's working, the brake pedal's yeah, a little he doesn't, soft. Yeah, he doesn't have the back. The brakes needed a little tune-up. Second down. There's the red zone offense for USC on the year. We're just three minutes into this game. By turnover, the Trojans threatening. Here comes a blitz. Palmer, the play fake, and throws complete, but it was Powell, his fullback, who lost his footing, and no gain on the play, got back to the line of scrimmage. So here comes a key third down for USC and obviously for the UCLA defense. Well, we talked about Cade McNown early in this football game in that matchup with Claiborne, but Carson Palmer's matchup is going to be against Nick Aliotti. I mean, the whole 11 people on defense are going to try to be playing with Carson Palmer and confuse the young freshman. I talked to the coaches for USC on the game, said it won't be confusing for Carson because we're only going one, two, progression reads. There's Nick Aliotti looking on at a third and eight. Soward and Miller, the wideouts. They fake the inside trap handoff. Palmer pressured, and did he step out of bounds? Yes, he did. Well, they put the heat on, as Gary said, and he ran out of bounds and ran out of real estate at the 18-yard line. It's a loss of five. Santi Hall that time is the guy that put the pressure initially on Carson Palmer, number 95, coming around the corner. Right there, did not go for the fake. Carson Palmer gets around the corner, but as you said, Brad, just stepped out. And this is a huge stop for the UCLA defense. 
Coming in here, the 91st rated defense in the country. Adam Abram set to try a field goal at 36 yards. He's 12 of 20 on the year from the right hash mark. Kick on the way, and it is good. So they get three out of the turnover, but UCLA, a victory of sorts in keeping them out of the end zone. And Paul Hackett's Trojans on the board first, courtesy of the field goal. 3-0, USC in front of UCLA. Favor, but USC has the lead, and when they're playing an undefeated Bruin team, it certainly has been a different story over the years. You know, that streak can be looked at both ways. It produces pressure on both sides if you let it. The kick for the second time today. Rock from the goal line. Out to about the 23-yard line. And Paul Hackett, his team in front. And the Trojans have won the last three when UCLA was undefeated. <laughs> and look at that, seven of eight right. when UCLA was in the top ten. But there's not a single guy on this field for USC that That's has right. any remembrance of that at all. That's just in the back of the media guys. <laughs> Second straight time that the Bruins will work from their own 23-yard line. Brad, notice the wide splits that US, uh, UCLA's offensive line uses. Bill Young, the defensive coordinator, feels he has a bit of a read on them when they run the ball or pass the ball. They get a little wider when they run, a little tighter when they throw, and that makes sense. Bill told me that won't make much difference to us because we're a one-gap team. They're going to take a gap, charge through there, and try to stop the running game before it gets started. Charlie McFerrin, the referee, over to talk to Bob Toledo. And I don't know if this is a communication, a headset problem, or a clock problem. I'm not quite sure. Oh, well, you know what else it could be? Paul Hackett doesn't have sunglasses, and Bob <laughs> always wears sunglasses and can't quite see as well. See, Bob always has Yeah, but Paul's got the hat, hat. way down yeah, over his eyes. he's got that uh, uh, hat all the time. Pulled down. Got a kind of a Lou Holtz look with that right, hat for, right. for, for Paul. Hey, big down, one pass today, one interception. There's, There's Paul. There Got the hat. Yep. These guys used to ride to work together when they were assistant coaches at USC. Now in his first season, taking over for John Robinson. And has his team seven and three, five and two. And obviously USC thinking about bowl games and there's several possibilities for them. I saw Jimmy Rogers from the Sun Bowl here as a possibility one of the bowls possibly in uh, Hawaii and the Holiday Bowl also a possibility. One other factor in this football game UCLA has been stewing for a while on this quote from the coach a while back before USC played Oregon. He said the team to beat was the Ducks. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Players on the UCLA have been waiting to show Paul Hackett. You can see the big splits for UCLA. And yeah, that's Deshaun Foster coming through one of those big splits, and the freshman breaks a tackle in the clear and out to the 38-yard line. A 15-yard pickup for Deshaun Foster. The big splits have been a trademark of this UCLA team for two years now. The tailbacks, this year it's a three-headed monster, are gashing this defense, trying to get the defense to spread out. Look how far the defensive linemen are spread out with those splits. And when the tailback takes it up there, it makes it easier for those linemen to get angles in the running game. Foster's a star in the making. He's got a first down for the Bruins now, out near the 38-yard line. Play action. McNown all day to throw. Too much air under that one. Nice adjustment made and a catch made at the 20-yard line by Farmer. <laughs> There's never too much air for Farmer. Maybe not. You cannot cover anybody better than Dalen McCutcheon covered Farmer this time. This ball is thrown about 20 yards short by Cade McNown. Watch this thing. If it was the Midwest right now, there'd be hunters shooting this duck down. <laughs> But you know what? The volleyball player says, thank you very much. If it was a volleyball, he'd have spiked it. He went to the net and made the catch in his first down at the 20. He got it. You're allowed to carry it in football. That would have been a carry in volleyball. You can add 42 more yards to that 906 now for Danny Farmer, who's on his way to a 1,000-yard season. Darrell Price in motion, the fullback. Out of the UCLA backfield. McDowell's going to take off on his own. Inside the 10, and he's got a first and goal.
Well, you mentioned it. Kane McNown, the only quarterback in the history of this matchup that has a chance to beat the Crosstown rival four consecutive times. Well, actually, there's two. Carson Palmer has a chance, well, too, that's right? <laughs> but he doesn't just beat you with his arm. Everybody at USC knew that you had to keep this great playmaking quarterback in the pocket, but it's easier said than done. After that interception on their first play, the last three plays have been 15 yards, 42 yards, and now 11 more. First and goal at the nine. Straight up the middle and down to the four, Darrell Price. At the 10 minute mark, three nothing USC, but the Bruins down deep in Trojan territory. And there's what they've done this year, leading the Pac-10 in their red zone offense. They started out hot. They scored the first 14 times they got in the red zone to begin the year. That always helps the stats. Yes, it does. We saw many of those earlier this year. And it now comes in at quarterback. So Drew Bennett in there as the signal caller, and McNown now on the handoff. They were thinking about an option, and uh, the option is for USC's defense to put number 18 on his face. Of course, Drew Brent Bennett caught that huge jump ball pass earlier in the year, but then you see it. Cade McNown right here, handoff, and it's going to be the option play to the outside. A lead back, blocking, pitch it, Cade. And that touchdown if he pitched the ball. So it's third down and goal at the four. Cade's been watching too much of that highlight of himself. The one where he hurdled everybody. <laughs> right. Tops in the pack dead on their third down conversions as well. Price in motion. McNown has to throw in a hurry. He's got a man. Touchdown. Deshaun Foster out of the backfield. Like a week ago against Washington, UCLA takes the opening drive, sputters with the interception, but the first time they're able to run more than one or two plays, they show that great offense, and Deshaun Foster, the true freshman, gets into the end zone to increase his freshman record as a scoring for UCLA. Sailors extra point sails right through the middle. With eight minutes, 41 seconds remaining, first quarter. Third ranked UCLA now in front. Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Ford Motor Company. Better ideas driven by you. Gap Khakis, Chili's, a proud sponsor of ABC College Football. And Solomon Smith Barney, let's get to work. Success is earned. And Bob Toledo's Bruins earned that drive, I guess, 77 yards and six plays. Some big chunks in there. And Cade McNown throws the touchdown pass to the freshman tailback to Sean Foster. And don't remember, don't forget Danny Farmer with that uh, circus catch on a ball that uh, looked more like a punt than a, than a deep ball. <laughs> And really, that's the criticism of Cade McNown from the pro scouts. Yep. I mean, when you start to judge, does this guy, what is the impact he going to have at the next level? Everybody wonders, including his own coach, frankly, Bob Toledo has questioned whether Cade has enough arm strength to play at the next level. My opinion is he does. He'll get stronger as he gets older. His techniques will improve as he has to play at the next level. And I think he's such a great athlete. Three or four years down the line, everybody's going to say, what have I been thinking not drafting this guy? <laughs> Making his 42nd start, you see his record as a starter, looking for his 30th victory. You would assume if he ends up in a West Coast type offense, that's more about timing than strong arm anyway. Yeah, that's, that's true. I mean, uh, you know, there, you don't have to have a big arm, but you do need to be a little crisper on those deep passes. That one was, frankly, very lucky. Sailor to kick. Dalen McCutcheon. Five yards deep is going to bring it. McCutcheon flags down as he goes down near the 19-yard line, and they'll probably bring this back on an illegal block. One more look at that circus catch by Danny Farmer. He does it all year. You know, you got bump and run to the outside. Defensive back McCutcheon has his back to the ball. Farmer stops. McCutcheon stops. Farmer, six foot four, has a 40-inch vertical jump. McCutcheon's trying to hold on, and uh, that's a great matchup. And uh, USC, so far in this game, has done bump and run coverage to the outside and try to keep their safeties involved in the run game. That's a number one concern for USC, stop the run. 
And the officials continue to uh, have a committee meeting with the clock stopped eight minutes, 30 seconds to go. While we check out the penalty, we check out John Saunders in New York. John? Brad, in this Burger King update, this is the rivalry of the day, at least one of them, Florida against Florida State. Doug Johnson back to pass, looks upfield, and sees Travis McGriff is wide open. You saw the defender slip on the play. It's 7-0. The Gators now have the lead. Brad? The crime dog continues to shine there for Florida as McGriff on his way to Carlos Alvarez all time receiving mark on the end of that scoring toss seven nothing there seven three here for Paul Hackett in this football game he's basically going to be calling all the plays for USC and I think it's imperative when you have a freshman quarterback going against I just, this defense may be suspect for UCLA but it's still imperative that USC runs the ball. And I think consistently, not big plays. Yes, you're going to get some of those 30, 40 yards from Chad McCutcheon, but consistently moving the chains of the run game will take a lot of pressure off the young quarterback. Chad Morton had one of those long touchdown runs. Yeah. Last year, we saw him go 49 yards to help put USC in front by a touchdown in a seesaw battle that ended up last year 31 24 at the Coliseum. I'll tell you, Brad, this committee, committee meeting lasts much longer. They have to bring in Ken Starr here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting bored. <laughs> There's the defense, and it's never happened that a national championship team has been anywhere near a 91st rank. So UCLA, if they can win two more games and make it to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, they would kind of shatter that myth that you got to have a great defense to win. Well, I don't think you have to have a great defense, but you got to have one. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Aliotti has, ta Aliotti has taken a, a bit of a criticism, and not just from the talk shows. Usually, you know, the coaches get riled up a bit about people who don't know much about what's going on, criticizing them. But when your own head coach pops you in the paper, you know that something has to do a little better. That happened a couple of weeks ago. Bob Toledo said it was time to shake things up. I had made suggestions and made suggestions and made suggestions, and my defensive staff, quite honestly, weren't heeding my advice. And so he said, I had to say something. He said, Nick and I are great friends, but I'm the head coach. Yeah. I made that comment, and I'm not going to pull it back. And since then, Nick says, I'm a tough guy. I can handle it. Yeah, he has. But you know, better than that, his defense has handled it. That's what's been big. Here's a guy, Ricky Williams, as we see flashed on the screen, that's a tough guy to that's handle. A, that's it's, how hard it is to tackle him. He just flashes right yeah, by Sometimes like he can run right into right. the Rose Bowl when he's <laughs> going to be in Austin next week. But offsetting penalties, and we will re-kick. And we'll try it again from almost the same exact spot. McCutcheon coming to the left this time. And Dalen pulls up at the 20, and that's where he goes down. So we mentioned the matchup with Cade against number 55, the All-American. But it's Hollywood time today. Defensive coordinator Nick Aliotti says, OK, Carson, saw you play in high school, but get ready for a big time college defense. We're gonna come at you from every different angle. We're gonna shift and it's gonna be Steven Spielberg today. <laughs> from the 20 yard line now, that's where the Trojans take over. Remember last time they got the ball by the interception in Bruin territory. So this time they'll have to try to go 80 yards to put points up and it's Palmer who comes up firing. RJ Sauer, fumble. Bruins have it. That's exactly what happens when you don't practice. It's been two weeks. He's been hobbling around, working out on his own on the side of the field, just trying to get in the game. He gets in the game here, and he gives it up. You're concentrating on that ankle. You're thinking about, I'm feeling good. And then all of a sudden, you make a cut. Ankle gives way just a bit. The ball goes flying. Robert Thomas was there, but boy, I'll tell you, Ryan Neese, I think, made the play on that one. So each team with a turnover now, and here's the Bruins with an opportunity to put more points up from the Trojans' 22-yard line. Draw play, Foster, and he's inside the 20. Pickup of about four as Abdul Shaheed made the tackle. Brad, I would say that the M.O., what people think about UCLA when they watch them around the country on television, is they think of all the highlights, the long throws and everything. But this team runs the ball physically right at you. They've got Ferris up there up front, who's one of the best 
in the country. Myers has been around a long time, the senior guard. Sean Stewart, a senior center. Second down and six. Trojans thinking blitz. They're going to bring it. McNown, screen pass the other way. Oh, that's almost, it is intercepted. Well, wait a minute now. The officials have not made a ruling because both guys have a hand on the football. Throwback, throwback screen to Deshaun Foster, and I'm not sure. I think Foster ended up with it. I guess he did. Ty goes to the offense right at the 20-yard <laughs> line. Bit of a play action. Cade's going to fake to Foster, come back out of it. But you can see he lobs this ball up. And I think it was Cook. Rashard Cook is the guy who played his man properly and almost came up with that interception. Bump and run coverage out to the outside again. Third down and eight. McDowell's going to throw the screen the other way. This one set up a little bit better. Spinning inside the 10, and it's first and goal to Sean Foster. I guess that says you throw a hanging curve to one side and you luck out with a pulled home run just foul, so you go hanging curve to the other side. Deshaun Foster makes the catch. You see Chris Claiborne, he's the guy that got blocked. That was the key block of the play. That ball was laying. I think it was Andy Myers that made the block, the guard, as he spied the All-American and just picked him off. First and goal again. Foster the tailback. Gets the call, tries a stiff arm, and he's going to lose some yardage. Ennis Davis, first man there to meet him. And then Gibson came flying in from his linebacker spot. It's a loss of three. I've watched UCLA play now for a couple of years. So I think what is this, our fifth or sixth time live we've seen him play, Brad. And I still have no idea as I sit here. And usually I have a pretty good idea what they're going to run. There, You just have no idea what play this team will run. I think uh, Al Borges over there has got a little Ouija board calling plays. Second and seven. Here's a toss sweep. They got him down to about the three. Sean Foster, a workhorse freshman so far today. We talked to the offensive coordinator Al Borges and Bob Toledo yesterday, and they both said might be a breakout day for this guy. That's right. He's coming on. He's healthy. It could be one of those days where everybody goes away from the Rose Bowl saying, we got that guy for three more years or two more years or whatever it's going to be. They hope three more. <laughs> Third down and goal at the two. Two tight end set. And now on the keeper. And get there. Second time today, he's run that way. And he says, let's go for it. I don't know if his coach is going to agree or not. Apparently, he will. Another option play that I think McNown would have been better off pitching that ball, took it up inside, and just one block, not made, stopped it. He got up immediately, looked to the sideline, and said, let's go. And that's what they'll do. Walendi, the up man in the eye, Foster the tailback, fourth and goal for the Bruins. Foster, touchdown! You know, we've been talking about that offensive line, but this time it was Craig Walendi who took on that big middle linebacker diving at the tailback and just cut his feet out. And then Sean Foster just jumped over the, the goal line. It was a beautiful play, and that is a huge motivating factor for UCLA's offensive line. Sticking it in on fourth down. With 4.15 left, Sailor's extra point is up and good. The entire team looked to their head coach and said, Coach, let's give it a go. They were rewarded on the sideline. It's 14-3. Seconds left, Todd Marinovich to Johnny Morton, and a touchdown. And USC went on to win 45-42, as you hear Keith Jackson call it. Terry Donahue on the sideline watching uh, what they thought would be a victory slip away. Seven straight wins since then, though, and now the Bruins in front 14-3. After they recovered the R.J. Soward fumble, they took it 22 yards in seven plays. 
Chris Saylor, the senior, set to kick. Chad Morton, five yards deep, will not bring it out. But well, we just saw Johnny Morton make that play, brother of Chad that's Morton, right. and that's exactly what has to happen. Somebody has to make a play now for USC and take some of the pressure off their young quarterback. Wisconsin up two touchdowns on Penn State, and don't you know that Badger fans are going crazy right now, though there's a lot of football to be played there. Ohio State with a win over Michigan today has set up a Rose Bowl possibility for the Badgers, and of course, who would they play out here? Well, if USC could pull an upset, it would be UCLA. If UCLA can keep on winning, it might be a bag of Tostitos <laughs> for them at Christmas time. And after their last win, UCLA's last win over Washington, Bob Toledo said, you know, everybody had a sigh of relief after that one, and then they said, okay, let's get back to work. We're thinking Tostitos. Palmer fakes the toss and takes off on his own and takes a shot, knocked out of bounds on the sideline by Sally Hall. Well, the BCS is about as familiar to these guys as ABC now because everybody's <laughs> talking about it in college football. The Three Rose games. Bowl presented by AT&T. Nokia Sugar Bowl, FedEx Orange Bowl, and then the whole bag of chips in the Fiesta. And there's the criteria used. Palmer with a long handoff to Morton, and Morton behind his offensive line just trying to find some daylight, and he doesn't find any. UCLA ranked third in the country coming in, but in the bowl championship series, which quite frankly right now is more important, they're in a little better shape than that. Right behind Tennessee with Kansas State, courtesy of their early games against easy opponents still in that three spot. Well, you know what really is going to stand out of this is both Tennessee and Kansas State have a 12th game. Right. They both go 12 and 0. That I think is going to edge UCLA right out of that Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. And there's nothing UCLA can do about the extra game because the Big 12 championship and the SEC championship. Chad Morton into the secondary. Finally tracked down at the 45-yard line, but he rips off a 26-yard run. 14 to 3 here. Let's get an update on that Big 10 game with John Saunders. Brad, as you know, Wisconsin trying to get into the Rose Bowl facing Penn State today. Mike Samuel with Chris Chambers. What a tremendous catch. He dives and grabs a home touchdown. 14-0 to score there right now. Kentucky has just put a touchdown on the board, and they lead Tennessee by one. Brad. Thank you, John. Here it's 14-3 with three to go. First quarter, the pass to Mike Boscinelli. Good for five down to the 39-yard line. So the Trojans have a little bit of a drive going here. Big college football rivalry weekend this week, but don't forget a lot more coming up next week on ABC at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. out here on the Pacific uh, Time Zone. We'll bring you a college football doubleheader. It's the Aggies of Texas A&M trying to slow down Ricky Williams, and then Colorado and number 19 Nebraska get together in Lincoln. So join us with some leftovers. Those games are anything but leftovers. Second down at five remaining. The pass knocked away. Nice job defensively by Marcus Anderson. Marcus Anderson has played his way out of the doghouse. In our opening spot, we had him stripping the ball of Stanford, probably the biggest play of the year. Marcus Anderson playing one-on-one -on -one coverage, but what you don't see just to the left of the screen is Larry Atkins was helping Marcus deep on that play, so he could squat on the out. A little bit of a gimmick defense that UCLA is using. Carson Palmer did not read it, threw it right into coverage. Now it's third down and five. First incompletion was right there for Palmer. Now he moves around in the pocket, the pass in and out. Uh, they're gonna call it a catch and I a think fumble. So. Yep. Ryan Rock came up and made that hit. Mindrell Hayes caught it and coughed it back up, but he wasn't going to get a first down anyway. That bend, but don't break defense. Well, actually, it's a bend and break defense. It's bend. <laughs> a little bit of both. A little the bit of both. Of the right now, it's bending. It ain't breaking. Flat route to the outside. One guy goes in, one guy goes out. Nice hit this time by Rock. Came up on the ball, just zeroed in to make the tackle, didn't watch the ball, and then the fumble backwards for no first down. Matt Giveaway will just try to punch one out of bounds. He punched it out of bounds, but I'm not quite sure where he got it. The official walks up to about the 15-yard line. Well, I think he got a cheerleader with that. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Carson Palmer and uh, has all the makings of star quality out here. And who knows, maybe three years from now we'll be doing this game, we'll be talking about him as a Heisman candidate. Well, he, he definitely has potential to be a pro. He has a pro body. Right. He has a pro delivery. But there's a lot of steps before you get to that level. Ken O'Brien in the sunglasses right there, the former New York Jet, is the quarterback coach. There you see Billy Miller talking to Carson saying, he's calm down, it'll be okay, we'll get it going. Keith Brown now comes in at tailback for the Bruins as that three-headed tailback by committee, working pretty well for UCLA. McNown deep and got his man on the run. Who else? Farmer knocked out of bounds at the 47-yard line. That might put him over 1,000 right there. 38 more yards for his favorite target. The game plan was to keep Cade McNown in the pocket, or for whatever reason, don't let him go to his left. So what happens? He goes to his left. This is when McNown is at his best, getting out of the pocket and basically throwing almost on the run, sidearming it, and getting those big hands and those people out of his way. He's as good as I've ever seen throwing outside of the pocket. So Farmer, another big play. 80 yards on two catches and a first down back on the Trojan end of the field. Deshaun Foster back in there. He almost lost the football. Nice tackle by Grant Pearsall from the secondary. Well, get this stat from the UCLA. The whole season, they've only fumbled the ball three times and never on a running play. One on a punt, one on a sack, and one on a completion and a fumble ever. They have not fumbled running the ball all year. A little over a minute left in the first quarter. 14 to three Bruins lead. Second down and a long seven. USC has come out of the bump and run coverage. They backed off. The backfield empties as McNown drops to throw. That one tipped. Nice job defensively. Abdul Malik got a big paw in the way on that one. And it'll bring up third down and long. The MetLife Blitz Snoopy 2 along with us today providing our aerial views of this beautiful stadium, the Rose Bowl and the surrounding LA area. Snoopy 2 usually going about 35 miles an hour. We got extra juice up there today though, <laughs> as this is a big game. Gabe McNown had hit his last five. As you look in from the blimp, he's going to put another one up here. We expect on third down and seven. Four wide receivers for Cade. Has time and throws incomplete. Intended for Brad Melsby. A little bit of a collision over there with Kenny Haslip, but no penalty. Excellent, very good coverage. The ball was thrown behind Melsby that time. But you know, the protection again, so good. Cade McNown, no one at his feet, just able to throw the ball, just kind of squirted on him. Came to threw it to kind of to his own left, and Melsby had no chance. If the ball would have been thrown properly, they would have had a chance. This is the part of the field that you have to watch out for one of those trick plays, though, from UCLA. Sailor in there. He does both duties as punter and kicker. And he's standing at his own 42-yard line. Larry Parker won't fair catch. He'll take it at the 7. And he spins out to about the 13-yard line. Six-yard return. USC gets the ball back, but again, they're losing on the field position battle since early in the game when they had the interception. From that point on, it's been at their own 20 or worse to start things off. Well, we saw Chad Morton squirt that play running the ball. That's exactly what USC has to continue to do. Keep popping it against this gambling defense, a bit of an undersized defense, and keep Cade McNown off the field. He's too tough to stop. As they come up to the line of scrimmage as a group in the huddle. Parker and Miller both split down to the bottom of your screen. Chad Morton got an opening on the left side, and that could have been danger, but Brendan Ian Badejo, who's one rangy linebacker, hung on for dear life. Pick up a six. Coming up next Saturday, 4.30 Eastern on ABC, we'll bring you the Skids game from Rancho La Quinta Country Club out here in California. Don't miss Greg Norman, Fred Couples, Mark O'Meara, and the defending champ, Tom Lehman. And the Shark is back. The back and the shoulders apparently are better, 
and he'll be along with us next Saturday on ABC Sports. That's going to do the first quarter in, and UCLA in front 14 to 3. ABC Sports presentation of college football return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Gary Danielson with you from the Rose Bowl. Don't forget, you can ask Gary questions about today's game at the Bowl Championship Series website at ESPN.com or AOL keyword ABC Sports. And we'll get some questions as we go through the game. Carson Palmer in trouble. Scrambles out of trouble. He lost the ball. Bruins have it. Ryan Neese with a fumble recovery. You saw the great feat of Carson Palmer coming out of the pocket right there, but you tell every quarterback when you're scrambling, be careful of the guys behind you. They, you run 4-7, and that's pretty good. The guys behind you run 4-5, and they catch him. You can see Pete Holland makes the hit. I think it was Ryan. Was it Ryan Neese? Nice? Ryan Neese nice was there, but I'm not sure if he got it or not. But again, another huge turnover in his football game, a 30-yard field for the Heisman, an All-American candidate to play right now. This is the defense for USC has to get a stop. So they set up shop at the 30-yard line. Jermaine Lewis in there, and the little guy gets the call, and he runs in to a wall, and Aaron Williams, who made the tackle. Not much on the ground today for Lewis. It's been Deshaun Foster that's done most of the damage. Brings up second down and eight. 14-30 remaining in the half. And Chris Ferris says if we control the line, we're going to win it. And that's what you like for tackles to say. <laughs> oh this time Lewis has some room to work. Oh my, Craig Willenge that time had a knockout punch. Uh, just a knockout punch of a block. I mean, when your fullback comes around, and just stones David Gibson on the play. <laughs> what a block. I mean, no wonder they got three guys that want to run the ball for tailback. <laughs> I'd volunteer if I had a fullback like that. And yeah, there's two good fullbacks, too. Darrell Price as well as Will Endy. I think David Gibson's got to come off the field. I mean, he got hit right in the jaw. So back to the huddle goes McNown. First penalty of the game against UCLA. Back to the 38-yard line. One more look at that block by Walendi right there. The fullback comes around the corner, just puts oh. Gibson out. Oh, man. Second down and 18 now. McNown, pressure coming. Dances out of it and then runs out of room. Chris Claiborne. Converges there with his teammates. Well, Claiborne cleaned it up, but it was pressure from the outside that made the play that time. Claiborne, the Butkus finalist, is down to three. That guy certainly has been as good as we've seen this year, and we've seen some good ones, including that win and Jeff Kelly at Kansas State and a lot of others. But Claiborne plays the pass as well as the run. Third down at 17. Now down the middle. It's intercepted. And it's Claiborne, and he's going the other way. His fifth interception of the season, and he might take it to the end zone. All the way to the five. Guess who came back on the field to make the play? Danny Farmer, wasn't it? Well, David Gibson first. Watch number 22 come back and he make the pop on the play. And then Claiborne picks up the interception and he would have scored except Danny Farmer. First he dodges Cade McNabb. We had that matchup going the other direction. We were wrong <laughs> in the pregame. Farmer comes from behind and tries to strip it. But Claiborne, running out of gas, holds on to the ball better than his quarterback. How often does one of your linebackers lead the team in interceptions? Fifth on the year, a 66-yard return. And now the Trojans right back in the hunt. First and goal just outside the Bruin four. Well, a season, we got 10 guys on the field. 
Papadakis got popped at the line of scrimmage, bounced off and got about a yard. Kind of tough. Hall made the hit. Kind of tough to run the ball when you only have 10 people out there. That'll bring up second down and goal. 10 players on the field that time for USC, and that would have been a good time to take a timeout. But you know what? Not even the coaching staff for USC knew it, or I'm sure they would have signaled. They didn't even weren't signaling anything. That was a bust. Just yeah. inside the four yard line. They got 11 now. Play action, Palmer wide open, touchdown. His tight end Antoine Harris. Well, you gotta hand it first to David Gibson, then Claiborne's in the right spot running it down. They try one play with 10 guys, and they come back with 11, and it works a lot better. The freshman tosses it to a wide open Antoine Harris, and all of a sudden, we got another typical USC UCLA football game. <laughs> Paul Hackett acts like he's been through it many times before, but some of those assistants are a little more excited. Extra point by Adam Abrams is up and good. Second interception of the game for Cade McNown. This time the pass was a bit high. Number 22, Gibson, was knocked out just two plays earlier. Clears his head, comes back and reads the play. Ball was thrown a bit high inside. Gibson cleans it away. And all of a sudden, number 55 is facing the other All-American. And number 55 wins this one. Talking about All-Americans and maybe a future All-Pro, we've got one along with us right now on an extra headset, Jason Seahorn down on the sideline. Jason, how you doing? I'm doing wonderful, thank you. I couldn't think of a better place to be on a Saturday in November. It's good to see you. I know you and Gary, uh, I guess we're working out together. It's good to see you working out. <laughs> Do a little treadmill. You gotta take care yeah. of yourself. See, I was walking, he was working out. <laughs> we were a little different. How's the rehab going? It's coming along fine, thank you. I'm taking my baby steps just nicely. Jason, I know you probably zeroed in on that USC secondary. They started early bumping, but they got beat. Looks like they backed off already to me. I think the biggest thing they wanna do is just mix it up a little bit, give them a little a different variety here and there. You don't want to show Cade McNown the same thing all game because eventually they'll take advantage of it. What we don't want you, Jason, is to be back as a kick returner right here on this particular <laughs> place. That Stay experiment right. failed. We'll have no more of that. <laughs> Here's the kick. And it'll be taken a yard deep. Renosa, that's a pretty good room out across the 25 yard line. The 68th meeting between USC and UCLA. Jason, what's your greatest memory of playing in this matchup? Uh, my senior year against U at UCLA, we were in uh, the, the uh, Coliseum and everything was working out great. We had the ball on the two yard line. All we had to do was score to go to the Rose Bowl and you know, it didn't work out for us. But it's just the, to be able to play in front of your home, home crowd like that in the Coliseum was a lot of fun. All right, we're gonna ask you one question you can think about. You don't have to answer it. Our AFLAC trivia question, when did UCLA first defeat USC? You think about that one <laughs> and we'll maybe call you back. Thanks, I appreciate that one. Okay, Jason Seahart, a great player. Boy, you talk about a team missing a player. I don't know if there's any team in the National Football League that misses that player as much as his team does. And about an eight-yard gain on the run by the Sean well, Foster. See, I know how those former, former football players study for tests. No tutors on the sideline over there, Jason. Just get this one yourself, all right? If you missed it, our first game today, Ohio State beat Michigan. And now they await the Wisconsin-Penn State outcome to know whether or not the Rose Bowl bound. Wisconsin right now leading just before halftime by two touchdowns at Camp Randall Stadium. Here it's 14 to 10. Now that USC on Chris Claiborne's interceptions back in it, but this might be a touchdown the other way. Deshaun Foster, one man to beat, he won't get it. <laughs> 65 yards, touchdown. Did you say a coming out party today? A coming out big time. The freshman throws it one way, and now the freshman takes it the other way. Big splits, follow the fullback. Great block by Chris Ferris. Darrell Price that time gets a block, runs right through Claiborne, and the freshman takes it to the end zone and sticks it out a la Ricky Williams. Now remember, Sean Foster and Carson Palmer played against each other in high school last year for the championship as high schoolers. 
Now they're playing in the Rose Bowl. This is a little bigger than the CIF title game last year. And right now, it's 21 to 10. The Bruins in front. Game on the playing field, not from the vote of a bunch of writers and broadcasters. You can win a conference championship, that's nice. But winning the national championship means you're better than anybody in the country. The number one team in the country should play the number two team in the country. For the first time in history, the nation's number one and number two college football teams are guaranteed to meet in a true national championship game. ABC Sports will broadcast that game, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, as part of the Bowl Championship Series. The Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T. The Nokia Sugar Bowl, the FedEx Orange Bowl, and the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. All four make up the Bowl Championship Series. We're going to have a national championship game decided on the field. Everybody loves a champion, and all eyes will be fixed on that last game. That last game will be for the national championship, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, January 4th. Four bowls, one champion, one network, ABC. As of January 1st, 1999, we've begun a whole new era in college football. Tomorrow night on Sunday Night Football, the New Orleans Saints are in the city by the bay. They take on the San Francisco 49 Sunday Night Football, 8.15 Eastern on ESPN. Then on ABC's Monday Night Football and AFC East Battle, the Miami Dolphins go up to New England to face the Patriots in Foxborough. It all starts at 8 Eastern, Monday Night Football on ABC. so far he's been the star and playing in his first UCLA USC matchup Sailor nice kick McCutcheon he's going to bring it out from six yards deep Cuts to the sideline got around the corner and did a pretty good job with it about a 30 yard return for Dalen you wonder with RJ Soward being injured and not 100% if we might see Dalen McCutcheon on offense today Sean Foster, 99 yards, two touchdowns running, and a touchdown toss from Cade McNown. Well, here's the streak. They even have names for them out here. They're all W's for UCLA. The start, you got the record setter, the marathon. You talked about a long game. That one was four hours and 23 minutes <laughs> last year, of course. And then we got a bunch of question marks for 98. We'll, we're going to name that, too, before we leave today. Right now, 21 to 10. USC from its own 24. Palmer straight drop, swing pass to Morton. And he just tipped those out of bounds at about the line of scrimmage. You know, Brad, one of the things that's kind of a hidden fact about this touch, I don't know if it's a fact, but what I noticed is Claiborne looked a bit tired on this play. There he is right there. He just didn't have the quickness and bounce in his step that he usually has. Remember, this was the play right after the long interception return. And he just did not have any juice in those legs. Quincy Woods comes in as the fourth receiver, a former quarterback. He's in a slot to the left side. Oh, oh that handoff almost taken away from Carson Palmer. Had yeah, Tony White that time, the linebacker, timed it perfectly. He got a read on Carson Palmer's snap count. Was not changing it up enough. Now watch him. I told you it was a binocular game right up the gut. And it's a good thing that was a handoff because if it was a pass, it was going to be a sack. You at home don't need the binoculars because we can zero in on that offensive line. But I'll tell you, if you're here in the stadium, if you want to watch who's going to win this football game, it's not the pretty boys today. It's the guys up front. 
You saw Palmer's numbers impressive as far as completion percentage but they're not getting any yardage on the pass plays. Flag down. Contact back there where the intended receiver Billy Miller was. Probably going to be holding defensively on Jason Bell that time. Holding of an eligible receiver by the defense. 10 yard penalty, previous spot, automatic one, first down. One of the things I really think college football should look at is naming the player that was the offender on the play. Bump and run coverage right there. That probably was not the infraction, but everybody out here, all the mothers are going, I hope it wasn't my son that held on that one. And we really don't know who the official spotted on the play. I think they should do it like they do in the WAC conference and name the guy that hurt and give him a number. 10.06 left in the half, 21 to 10. The Bruins in front and a first down by penalty now. So far the game plan for Carson Palmer has been very simple. They have not let him throw the ball downfield. I think they need to go deep and air this ball out. Of course their deep threat, R.J. Soward, not playing much so far. There they go on a deep curl and a fumble. Picked up by Jason Stevens, going the other way. Stevens still on his feet, has got a convoy of helpers, and he's all the way to the 28-yard line. Turnover, turnover, turnover. We have met the enemy, and it's us. Larry Parker runs a great route, makes the catch. Marcus Anderson forces the fumble. And as you say, Jason Stevens, who's the newest starter back there, another freshman, put in late this year. His first start was the Cal game. He picks it up, and gee, look where that ball is again. 28-yard line. That is not good news. I don't care how good your defense is. UCLA, too many weapons to stop when you put the ball on the 30. Can't keep giving them the short field, as Gary said. It's inside the 28-yard line, three wide outs. Keith Brown. He's going to lose about a yard. Aaron Williams in on the stop. You know, but if this turns into a touchdown, this game really swings, obviously, in the Bruins' yeah, favor. I, I just don't know if USC has enough offense at this stage of Carson Palmer's development to come back against a tricky defense like UCLA. I mean, this is a battle-tested team. Everybody talks about them hanging by their fingernails to win games, but that breeds confidence because you win games like that. That doesn't make you nervous. That helps you. Second down along 10. We'll call it 11. And the hit on Keith Brown again immediately. Well, we asked the uh, Aflac trivia question to Jason Seahorn a little bit earlier. When did UCLA first defeat USC? I don't know if he's got a headset on up to that. Yeah, right, here we go, here we All go. Right, yeah, yeah. We, we, hey, I don't know when they first beat him, but if they keep turning the ball over, I know when they last beat him. <laughs> um, I'm going to guess about 1935. You're close, my friend. 1942, Ooh. 14 to 7. That's, that's not fair. I wasn't even born. Uh, we, we had one of those prices rights. You had a five year span up and down. You don't get to win anything. Yeah, Did I pick the wrong door? <laughs> you're close. Third down and nine. McNown, screen pass again. It worked earlier. Not this time. Big hit put on by Richard Cook. And we want to thank Jason Seahorn for being along with us. We wish him well in his rehab and hope to see him back next year. Really is a great football player. Richard Cook had the big hit. You know, the UCLA coaches told us he's a hitting machine from the secondary. But you know, they are other playmaker right now. Number 22, David Gibson, is down on the field right now. Second time Gibby's been down, and he is in some obvious pain. The helmet's off. He played Rover back a year ago when no one could find him, and he made all those plays. This year he's playing inside linebacker, getting hit more, and he's down on the field.
like we found the block. I think it was Brian Poley Dixon coming in as a wide receiver. The block on Gibson right there, and, and I maintain that still this is the most dangerous play in college football. You're allowed to block downfield when the ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage. It's dangerous, it should be outlawed. They have to change the rule. You talk about taking one in the ear hole. That happened right there. Well, you got a guy playing zone coverage, looking at the ball being thrown and being blocked by a wide receiver while it's thrown. I think they got to change that. It's not legal in the NFL. Chris Saylor's going to try a 38-yard field goal. He hit five last week. And he's got this one as well. Adds to the Bruin lead. Up to two touchdowns again now for Bob Toledo's troops who turned that turnover into three. They're just a scoring machine, aren't they? They just have so many weapons. Hit you from all sides. Only been sacked 10 times all this year. A lot of it's because they have a quarterback that can move around, but a lot of it because they have a quick strike offense. I mean, quick screens, uh, jailbreak screens like we just saw right there. Fades, rollout. They have everything in their arsenal. 24 to 10 Bruins, an ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. National car rental. So, what are you waiting for? Let's go. Nike and BASF. We don't make a lot of products you buy. We make a lot of products you buy better. Paul Hackett trying to do a little body English to uh, get that field goal out of there, but it didn't help as Saylor hits yeah. a 38-yarder. Well, Chris Saylor is healthy again. He broke his slump last week against Washington with five field goals, struggled a bit this season, but he has come back, and when he's healthy, you know, he's a returning All-American kicker, so He's found his stroke, and that's one of the reasons why I say UCLA is playing their best football of the season right now. Both teams have 10 points by turnover now, or turnovers that led to 10 points, if you will. Parker and McCutcheon are waiting on the kick. Dale McCutcheon's going to watch this one go out of bounds, though. And that'll be a free 35-yard return, basically, on that one, kicked out. Well, every so-called expert, Brad, says you can't win a national championship without a sound defense. Well, here's the scoring defenses. National, these are the four worst scoring defenses that have ever won a national championship. And look how far UCLA is away, 40 places almost. Now you look at total defense. This is yardage. I mean, this is amazing. Penn State in 1982 is closest, but that's, what, 25 spots away also. Amazingly, UCLA, I know they're playing in a great offensive conference in the Pac-10, playing Oregon and Arizona and Oregon State this year, but their defense has been holding on by the fingernails. Today, they've only given up 94 yards so far. End around coming to Parker with Palmer as his lead blocker, and he got him one. And Parker's got a first down. Now, there's a freshman quarterback that stuck his helmet in there and sprung his wide receiver on a 15-yard end around. See, that was a message play from Paul Hackett. They've been having trouble running the ball inside against this defense, so he wants to spread these guys out a little bit so he can run inside later. Fake the ball, counter tray, come around the outside. Carson Palmer on the top of your screen is going to peel back and make the block right there. Didn't really spring them, but it sure cleaned up the play very nicely. Still think USC needs to go deep with a bomb and move this defense back. Palmer might want it right here, Gary. There it goes. Incomplete. A little bump down there. Parker, the a rather Windrell Hayes, the intended receiver, and he and Jason Bell got a little tangled up back there. Well, that's especially when you start to miss R.J. Sound in this football game. When Terrell Hayes does not have that game-breaking speed, you can see Jason Bell, he's gonna beat him to the spot. You can't beat R.J. to the spot. Gets a bump right at the right time with his shoulder, not his hands, and that's a nothing play. That didn't scare anybody for UCLA. For UCLA. About the only guy on either team that's banged up is R.J. Soward, and that makes it sad that he's not out there because, as Gary said, they're certainly not full strength without their game breaker. Well, you know, R.J. Soward. Bumble. You see another one. Yep, it's going to be another turnover. 
make Larry Atkins recovered it, but was it Ivan Mendezio that made the hit to cause the fumble? Can't see, it happened way across the field. It's, like I said, a binocular game up front. UCLA continues to make the plays. Trying to run the ball, very safe call. They went deep, let's try to run the ball inside, but the playmakers, this time it's Chad Morton, does not make the play. The ball is stripped, and Larry Atkins falls out, and Larry Atkins, that's his 11th different time he's been involved in a takeaway this year for the UCLA defense. His fifth fumble recovery. Amazing. And it gives it back to McNown on the offense. Play fake on first down. Long ball on the sideline and overshot. Brian Poley Dixon, his intended receiver. Nice coverage that time to the outside. Antoine Simmons forced Poley Dixon. Bad, that's the first attempted pass to Poley Dixon in this football game. Antoine Simmons forced Poley Dixon that time to the outside near the sideline. And this time, Kate says, I'm not going to wait forever to throw this one. Get back, let her fly. The angle was not receptive. Watch, to the outside, you'll see the force. There's no room to throw the ball out to the outside. That's as good as you can do as a cornerback. Second down and 10 at the 48. Wide open. The tight end, Newfell. And Newfell rumbles down to the 37-yard line. Tight end was a big position in this game last year, remember, as Mike Grieve caught the first touchdown of this matchup, and then he caught the game winner. You remember that one when he broke about four or five tackles on the play? Both tight ends in there that time. You saw 88, but it's 40 Newfeld that makes the catch. Mike UCLA, Green. their seniors making their final regular season game. Yep. And around coming. It's Farmer. Ooh, did he get cut down? It's gotta be Claymore. It is. It was Daryl Knight also. Subbing in for David Gibson. Claymore and Knight were not fooled on that. Two inside backers just reading the flow and running it down. Again, UCLA keeps you off balance with a variety of plays. I wonder how they have time to practice it. Throwing it back the other way. Boy, that's a tough, tough catch to make. Terrell Price that time lined up as a tight end. He's usually a fullback. Just hit for a second and then went out to the outside on a throwback type of uh, one of those naked plays that Kate is so good at getting it in and out of his hand before USA. I mean, you got it's got to be frustrating, Brad to rush Cade McNabb. I mean, he sometimes, watch how quickly, comes out, fakes the handoff, Sammy Knight right, comes in and says, I thought I had him. <laughs> nice well, catch. He's only been sacked 10 times this year, and that's frustrating. Handoff. They got the first down to Sean Foster. And Foster over 100 yards now on the ground. And we're not even to halftime, 6.20 left. How good is he going to be? Well, they just keep trotting on guys on this football field. Sean Foster and Justin Vargas were the two premier running backs out here on the West Coast. UCLA recruited both of them. USC chose to recruit Justin Vargas. Michigan got him. USC got neither. A recruiting remembrance here for the first down. At the 25. Here he comes again. And he's been just six more. Well, Skip Hicks was the guy we thought they would miss this year, Brad, when we first started talking about this football team because he was a big power back. Of course, he went to the Washington Redskins. But Bob Toledo said we're going to do it by committee. And you know what? I think he's right. And I think, really, again, you got to go back up front. Ferris, Cabrera, Stewart, Myers, and Pollock. Those guys are the guys that are making it happen. Skip Hicks finally got his chance last week, by the way, and had three touchdowns for the Redskins. Deshaun Foster on the second and five. That's Farmer in motion. McNown rolling right. We don't see him do that much. Now he'll keep it. And he 
is going to be very close to a first down. <laughs> it was supposed to be an inside option play, one of those shovel passes. But you know, we talked about all those recruits, and of course the UCLA-USC game is a recruiting smorgasbord. <laughs> Watch Bob, he's going through the smorgasbord table right here. You gotta meet everybody. That's right. You know, it took him a little longer. Watch, he stays longer with the big guys than the small guys, you know? If he's taller than him, he just went right by that guy. See, no, he came back a to tall, him, though. A little tall, stays, watch, he didn't talk a little bit. Yeah, I like him. Now remember, only the home team, which is UCLA today, gets to invite players, but it's Ken Coker, the, the highly recruited defensive tackle for UCLA said, last year I called USC, got the tickets, but I really was gonna go to UCLA. Just wanted to go to the game. <laughs> Keith Brown at a tailback. He'll get the call. Down to about the 11, three yard pickup. Chris Claymore made the tackle. We're down near the four and a half minute mark. And the Bruins driving again. They come in as the fifth highest scoring team in the country at almost 41 a game. And they're ahead of that pace right now with a 24 up there on their side of the scoreboard. Brad, when Paul Hackett came back, he said it was incomprehensible that USC could lose seven times to UCLA. He also couldn't believe that up front, it wasn't like he remembered it. Where are the big guys? Keith Brown, he ran over one guy and then found a big guy of his own. Moreno, who has an interception in the game, comes up with a hit. Trying to snap that what would be eight straight games winning streak for the Bruins. But right now, they've got things in command. I still say, everybody talks about Tennessee, Florida State, Ohio State, Kansas State. I'm not going to bet against number 18. Until he start, stops breathing or is playing in the NFL, this guy is a winner. I was telling somebody out in the hallway before the game, your comment, if he's got a pulse, That's they're right. in every game. They're in every game. They're down at seven. Looks like a blitz coming, and, and now they back out of it. see if comes out of it. This guy's going to come. Goes over that blitz and got it down to about the eight yard line of the forward progress to Brian Paulie Dixon. See, that's what a senior quarterback can do. I mean, for two years, the first two years, UCLA had to live through a few mistakes, like Carson Palmer's making today, not changing up the snap count. But this time, Cade McNown held his snap count, saw the slot coming, the blitz coming, tried to check off, and now he's telling Bob, Bob I, I called it, they didn't go. I mean, what do you want me to do? I can only audible it, I can't make them run their route. Chris Saylor comes in. See, when you're a senior, you call the coach Bob. <laughs> Freshman, it's coach. Coach or Coach Toledo. 26-yard field goal attempt. Cade's so good, Toledo's calling him Mr. McNow. <laughs> field goal's up and good. Tax three more on. 27-10, Bruins in front. Uh, the Bruins and the Trojans, and it's all UCLA right now, 27 to 10. Chris Saylor to kick. Chad Morton watches this one go. Normally, number 18, R.J. Soward, would be a threat back there as yeah. a kick return man, and he's hadn't been a threat at all today. Now, just think about it, R.J. The last two games, 14 catches for 441 yards and four touchdowns. I think USC misses him about as well, about as much as NBC misses Jerry Seinfeld. I think you know. I mean, they miss him. And it's, they have a trouble, aren't they? Frazier's good, but yeah, come on. that's right. So Carson Palmer's got his work cut out for him, trailing by 17. Soward, remember the first time USC put a ball in the air last year, went 80 yards for a touchdown. And they do not have that deep ball threat out there, though he comes out. Will it be as a decoy, or actually he might come back off the field? No, he's just not going to go in the huddle. He stays out wide to the right side. Big cushion being given to Sauer. They do not believe he's going to run any short cuts. He's just going to go long. They'll swing pass it to Morton. Chad's knocked out of bounds after a pickup of about two. Marcus Anderson bumped him out of bounds. Well, last year, the UCLA defense was a bit of a voodoo defense. Frankly, you know, I, I played a lot of football, and I couldn't figure out what they were doing on defense. But this year, I mean, they are starting to become more and more simplified. Players are making plays. They're lining up in the right spot. They're not beating themselves. I think they're a better defense. They just aren't as good athletically as they were last year. Palmer, a lot of heat. Got away from it, and now a wide open field for Carson Palmer. 
across the 40, heads to the sideline and gets out of bounds with another big gainer. He's got some good wheels, 27 yards on the pickup. Moji Huma that time came in and blitz, a seven-man blitz. Everybody in the secondary is playing man-to-man. -man. The blitz comes free right there. You gotta make that play. When you got seven men coming, the defensive backs have turned their back to the play, and Carson Palmer shows why he's such a great, outstanding prospect as a quarterback. Longest now, play of the day for the offense, and it's a quarterback on a scramble. Yeah, it's not even a designed play. That's, uh, it, that's good and that's bad at the same time. I think Nick Galeoli will take that one, though. You're right. Four rushes for Carson Palmer now. First down at the 48. He comes up firing, and he got R.J. Sauer. Second catch of the day for R.J. He dropped the first one, really, without getting hit this time. Picks up about nine. Still a lot of respect for R.J. They know he's got a bad ankle, but they're not sure. Ryan Rock this time is out playing coverage to the outside. It was his zone. Marcus Anderson playing underneath as a strong safety that time. RJ really didn't get much practice at all and ran on his own on the sideline most of the week. And then when he finally did try to go and run some patterns, very, very sore yesterday, which they kind of anticipated. And here's a counter to Morton. He's got a first down. His jab goes down to about the 36 yard line. Just a couple of minutes left here as we head to John Saunders in New York. John. Brad, you had to wonder how Kansas State would respond after the big win against Nebraska. Corby Jones for Missouri, 20 yards to Kareem Wise for the touchdown. They missed the point after. Missouri has a three-point lead near halftime. Brad. Thanks, John. The problem for Missouri has not been leading at halftime. It's been maintaining oh, a second-half right. lead. So. But that obviously has huge bearing on UCLA's possibility of a national championship, too. But they've got two quarters and almost two minutes to go, and they all over Carson Palmer here. First sack of the day. Ryan Neese led the charge, but he had a lot of company with Powder Blue back there on Palmer. Well, you don't have to tell anybody out here in California who Ryan Neese is. Son of Ronnie Lott, the All-American, probably future Hall of Famer from USC, but he's playing in Powder Blue. <laughs> That's a tough one to take for the USC people. So Palmer goes down for the first time. Less time out for USC. There's Ryan Nice, number 47, has really become a big hitter on this Bruin defense. It would have been easy to have been a football player and not a student. A huge crowd on hand, and this is a hot ticket. Trust me, over 360,000 fans in five home games. That'll be a new record now. Previous mark back in 47 as far as average per game attendance. And they're here watching the number three Bruins against the seven and three Trojans. Morton hitting the backfield. Down he goes. Trevor Turner, first guy there. Right now, the sun is a factor for a quarterback. Carson Palmer is looking right into the sun. You can see the shadows looking out. And the sun is coming right at him like that. And he's looking right into it. It is a factor. Great day to work on your tan, though, for late November. We'll yeah, for, for the people that are on the left side, <laughs> people on the right, they don't get in. It is beautiful out here in Southern California today, as it has been all week. USC down to one timeout. And they still got quite a bit of turf to try to maneuver to get some kind of points before halftime. You know, it's amazing. When you watch this UCLA defense, you think they were a gambling, attacking defense last week against Washington a team that frankly does not run the ball all that well. UCLA did not make one tackle for a loss in that football game. Today, they have been doing that against the USC running game. They rushed for a season high 248 yards last week against UCLA, but a lot of those yards were towards the end of that football game, kind of meaningless yard. They were down by more than two touchdowns, and Washington was still running the ball. You can bet. Nick Aliotti will take that 143 right now. Don't forget next Saturday live at 1 o'clock, 10 o'clock Pacific time. Michigan State will take on the 14th ranked Nittany Lions of Penn State. And don't miss it when college football goes prime time. Autry Denson, the all-time rushing leader for Notre Dame, back here on the West Coast to take on the Trojans at 8 o'clock, 5 o'clock Pacific time. That's a week from today on ABC Sports. Carson Palmer, time and a ball down the middle that got there in a hurry. 
It's short of the first down, it appears, by about a yard and a half to Billy Miller. <laughs> it's got to be tough for the psyche of UCLA. They used a three-man rush. I'll bet they didn't rush less than six guys last year three times. This time, third and long, a three-man rush, sat back in a deep zone. Carson Palmer felt very comfortable throwing that pass and take a timeout, decide what to do on fourth and one. That time out taken by UCLA to regroup, so it still leaves USC one to play with. As they've got it down, it's a huge fourth down play coming up, though. It's going to be fourth down and about two. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt that right now UCLA is saying if we stop them here, this game is going to be tough for them to come back. They put another touchdown, and it's 27-14. USC says, I feel good going at halftime. Captain Doug McFadden is steering the MetLife Blimp Snoopy 2 up there carrying some great state-of-the-art camera equipment about 1,200 feet in the air and gives us the great shots from up in a crystal clear blue sky over the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Nice to have you along with us, Captain Doug. Our first Ask Gary question uh, for the day two. Who was oh, the quarterback for USC the last time they beat UCLA? Walter in Lakewood, California. Well, I mean, if you would have saw that uh, highlight we had, to Johnny Moore and Todd Marinovich. Went on to be the first round draft pick of the Oakland Raiders and uh, I don't know what he's doing now. I think he's surfing. <laughs> I, think. I think he was surfing while he was playing, to tell you the truth. If you want to surf and uh, get on ESPN.com or AOL, keyword ABC Sports to ask Gary a question. So what do you do here running the ball or do you pass the ball against this attacking UCLA defense? They're not getting much on the ground so far right. tonight. They had to throw for the touchdown, remember that. Papadakis, though, is the guy that's their banger, and I think he got it. I think he did, too. The spot is going to determine whether or not UCLA takes over. Now, the linesman came in, and to be honest with you, did not give them the most gracious of gifts, I don't think. USC, though, needs to get up at the line of scrimmage and be ready to down the ball. They don't want to take their last time out here. It'll be an official timeout to bring the sticks in, so that will give them time to it, talk it, it over. It is very, very close. I thought he had it with forward progress, but I didn't think the spot was quite as generous as maybe his forward progress was. At any rate, they'll bring it in from the other side. Pepidak has taken the isolation play off the outside. Tackle made inside, and I think it's Larry Atkins that comes up, the All-American. You know what? He did not make that, did he? I think that was a good spot. Lineman's right on it that time. The body language for USC, look how close they are to the bench. They don't think they made it. The defense is half out on the field. The offense is taking their pads off. RJ Sauer says we got it, but you're wrong, RJ. No. About 18 inches short, as number 18 was thinking they had it, they don't. A huge stop for Nick Aliotti and the Bruin defense. Now with a minute to go in the half and two timeouts, UCLA not going to sit on it. Larry Atkins, the All-American. As a defensive coordinator, you can't have enough of those guys. What a great shot that was, huh? McNown's thrown a couple of picks today. Really, the only yardage given up. Oh, they you are think about it, it was Chris Claiborne with that interception going all the way down to set up shop to get him a score. Satisfied, 27-10, huge stop. Doesn't want to be, look at, <laughs> Cade McNown just shrugged his shoulders. He didn't like it either. Everybody started booting. He said, what do you want me to do? He's coach the coach, says, I'm take the quarterback. It After I get my 20 million and I buy my own team, I'll do what I want. <laughs> or, or when I start giving a lot of money back to the school, see, then I can have some say in that. Don't forget halftime 98 with John and Todd's coming up in about one more snap. Actually, I don't argue with the strategy. I think it's sound. He made a huge stop. Don't spoil anything going into halftime up 27-10. Well, the turnovers, Paul Hackett will think about going to the locker room. Four of them has really cost his team dearly in these first two quarters. And the third-ranked team in the country trying to win their 20th straight game, and they'll trot with their leader, to the hometown locker room with a 27 to 10 lead. Looking for their 10th victory without a loss, the Bruins. And too many mistakes made by the Trojans in the first half. End of the first half from the Rose Bowl. UCLA leads 27 to 10 over the Trojans of USC.
straight. They've got the longest winning streak in Division 1A in the country. 27 to 10, they lead here at halftime. <laughs> Overlooking the Rose Bowl, there's somebody that uh, used their education well to buy some nice property, didn't they? <laughs> That's Kim Belton, our producer's right. crib, I believe. I'm not sure. <laughs> Of course, that game's going on up the coast. You notice how you see those Stanford signs again once basketball season starts, right? <laughs> yeah, the kickoff from Sailor coming up to start the third quarter. They've been unable to bring anything back, and they can't hear either, as USC will now have to start offensively from its own 20-yard line. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson back with you. A turnover-filled first half. Both teams turned them into 10 points, but it seemed like UCLA's uh, meant more. Yeah, they just have more weapons, that's why. I mean, you have, you know, four turnovers, a two interceptions by Cade McNown. One of them ball tipped just a bit. David Gibson makes a play, and Chris Claiborne takes it down the sideline, setting up USC's only touchdown. But, you know, USC, four fumbles. You just can't do it. Both teams, 10 points off the turnovers, but by oh my you give UCLA the ball four extra times quicker without punting you're going to be losing Carson Palmer's going to come up throwing first play of the quarter Billy Miller with a stiff arm and he got about 18 out to the 39 yard line Deshaun Foster the freshman we talked with the coaches and they said you know what I think it's going to be a coming out party for number 26 was it ever well it, it's a coming out party for him but he's coming out because of that offensive line up front I mean he he's the real deal but Blocking up front against this USC defensive line is providing all the fireworks for this football team. I mean, they can run, they can pass, throw back screen, they can do just about anything they want. USC is going to have to get something going with their ground game. Carson Palmer really was their top ground gainer in that first half, and he comes up throwing here, and he overshot his intended receiver. That's not helping them when you've got student body right and left over the years of 68 times these two teams have met. They got nothing on the ground. Yeah, it's student body, but it's like fourth graders against eighth graders <laughs> right here at recess. <laughs> Time. You know, they're not going to win. I think the other thing, if you look at the stats, is Carson Palmer is 11 for 13 in the first half, but for only 66 yards. They're protecting him too much. Hey, they're behind now. Throw the ball. Let him throw the ball downfield. If you're going to get beat, at least give him experience for future games when he'll be your primetime player. Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, brought us those first half statistics. And as Gary said, it doesn't do much good. Your pass efficiency can be great, but when you're only getting six yards per completion, it isn't doing your offense that much good. The leaders, you see, there's what Gary talked about. 66 yards on 11 to 13, 51 yards for Chad Morton, and about 26 of that came on one run. And R.J. Sauer, virtually ineffective with that bad ankle. He has not really been a weapon at all. We'll see if they use him more or try to use him more in the second half. Ryan Neese had a sack, a fumble recovery, four tackles. As you look at the defensive leaders for UCLA. Here's a crossing pattern. Morton out of the backfield that knocked out of bounds the 45-yard line. The speed of the USCLA defense is striking to watch up here. They're all over the field. I mean, you're just attacking from different angles, and they seem to be able to be wherever USC is trying to call the play. That that is just speed. They they they're moving defensive backs, the linebackers, and linebackers defensive ends, and they all can run. That giveaway, high snap. He oh. somehow got a line drive punt away, and it's going to end up being a pretty decent one. When it could have been disaster. It's a miracle punt. He, that one had eyes, 33-yard <laughs> kick. It's hard to believe, but that's the best play USC has made all day. That's their, <laughs> that's their play of the day. I mean, they had one fall right into Claiborne's hands for a huge play, but somebody who has reacted in a tough situation, Pat Swanson was the snapper that time. It was high and to the right. Gilmoray stops it with one hand and pooches it with the foot. That was brilliant. Got it down to the 22-yard line. That's where UCLA will go to work. Darrell Price, a single setback. It's a four-wide receiver offense for Cade McNow. And it is Price, the ball carrier, the fullback, and he blasts his way for about four off the left side. UCLA, we talked about their offensive leaders. Obviously, their quarterback, McNow, 9 out of 14, 131 yards. But Deshaun Foster, over 10 yards of carry and two touchdowns. And Danny Farmer, again, the top wide receiver, had a 47-yarder. And 
That really set the scene early in this game to get them on their first touchdown march. Second down and six. Jermaine Lewis now in there at tailback, and that is Farmer in motion. Play fake, and they come up throwing. It's Willendy, the fullback, and he looks like he's got a first down. There's Al Borges, Brad, offensive coordinator. He's pulling the strings. He's got a lot of weapons, but Brad, he doesn't have one weapon he talked about yesterday that really could have been a difference this year. Freddie Mitchell, their wide receiver, who was a huge player early in the season, broke his leg in the Houston game on a kick return, and it's much like missing R.J. Sauer for USC. Absolutely. I'm talking about Freddie Mitchell, as good as Danny Farmer, Brian Foley, Dixon are. He was a home run hitter. We saw him against Texas, and it, it's kind of scary to think what could have been with him. They did not get it uh, third down. That's going to be a big stop for USC. Yeah, and I'm a bit surprised by that call, too. Third and a long three that time, trying to run against a, a really stacked defensive line. Sultan Abdul Malik that time made the stop, and Jermaine Lewis, the smallest of the running backs in the game that time. That has to bring, bring bad memories back to UCLA fans. Two, a year ago against Washington State, probably the most critical time of the Bob Toledo era when he ran Jermaine Lewis on that last touchdown saving one yard play against the Washington State. That's when Skip Hicks had had such a huge game to that point. Sailor, a knuckleball that goes out of bounds at about the 39 yard line. 12 15 remaining third quarter. It's UCLA by 17. Win your right to play in a championship. Oh. And the MetLife blimp Snoopy 2 providing our bird's eye view of today's football action. Snoopy 1 and Snoopy 2 between the two of them. About 120,000 miles a year. That's like Dick Vitale type mileage. <laughs> you can look to the skies for Snoopy and the MetLife blimp. Nice to have him along with us today. Some beautiful shots on a beautiful day. And right now, UCLA in a beautiful position. Yeah, but they, they've got to be careful here, Brad. They don't want to lose their focus in this football game. It seemed a little complacent in that first series. Here's Palmer from the blimp, and he comes up short intended for Windrell Hayes. Well, we said we had some great gadgets. We got one of those telescopic lenses, I guess, huh? Carson Palmer that time never set his feet. That's why he didn't throw it very well. He was getting a rush inside, never set him, and the ball was wobbly and low and not much there. A one hopper intended for Hayes. It'll bring up second down and 10. You know, everybody thinks about Cade McNown, you know, being so successful in this game. The first game he played, though, as a true freshman, he was only eight for 17 with two interceptions. So he grew into the job, and so will Carson Palm. He's got two interceptions today as well. Here's Chad Morton, and he ran by a blitz, and Morton's in the open field. And he's going to be pulled down at about the 47-yard line. It's going to be a first down USC after we check in with John Saunders in New York. John? Bradwell K-State has come out to work in the second half against Missouri. Marlon Charles should have been stopped a couple of times, stays on his feet, and busts this one for 55 yards, gets it down to the 11-yard line. Three plays later, it's Michael Bishop who punches this one across for the touchdown from a yard out. 17-13 now, K-State has the lead. Meanwhile, Florida State has just gotten on the board with a touchdown. The extra points still yet to come, but right now it's 12-12. Brad. As again, USC trying to establish your ground game. That's what Gary and I sort of talked about about five minutes ago coming out of the halftime. Chad Morton got a couple. Paul Hackett really has no choice. His offensive line really doesn't match up. They don't block the blitz very well so far in this football game. You see the running game, 13 runs, uh, 13 carries for Morton, but only 60 yards, and he's popped a couple, but it has not been consistent yards. So Paul Hackett is still trying to find something to hang his hat on. Tight end, Antoine Harris was shaken up a little bit on that play, walks off under his own power. He has... The only touchdown today for the Trojans on that play action pass down close to the goal line. Papadakis comes in now at the tailback spot behind Marvin Powell. But it's Palmer who throws the out and he hit his receiver who had slipped and fallen. Windrell Hayes almost made that catch line down. 
That one looks like it was going to be on the money, that's for sure. When Drell Hayes came, and you're right, he just ran right out of his shoes. Speed cut is what they call it. Ryan Rock is on coverage that time. A speed cut means that the receiver runs through his break. He does not kind of gather his feet and slow down. He tries to curve, a quick curve. That time he had a Ford and he needed a Ferrari. <laughs> Didn't handle that curve very well. No, did it. Perfect on third down passing. Here comes the heat on the freshman, and he's still perfect. And it's Hayes for a first down at the 35-yard line. You will see UCLA comes with a blitz, but there's the receiver. We picked the right guy. He's going to come right inside, goes out about five yard, pressure release. One guy goes deep. The ball is thrown properly. See, when you got a blimp guy that can pick out the right receiver, <laughs> then you know you got either a good blimp guy or a very predictable offense. One of the two, right? We got both, I we think. We got maybe. both, baby. <laughs> First down. Here comes the pressure again. Palmer got away from it. He's going to go deep to the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for R.J. Sauer. He had a half step on Jason Bell out there, but it's incomplete with 10.43 left in the quarter. Let's check in again in New York. John Saunders. Brad Florida and Florida State. Marcus Outson had yet to throw a touchdown pass in his career, but he has one now. That one's tipped by Manuel. Perhaps should have been an interception into the hands of Peter Warwick. 32 yards in the touchdown. The extra point is good. Florida State Seminoles have grabbed the lead. Brad. Peter Wark, something else. What moves he has once he gets his hands on the football. There are three great receivers in my mind in college football. And I think Torrey Holt, David Boston, and Peter Warwick. It's a toss up. They're all different. And they're all good. Palmer, a stiff arm. Now puts the brakes on and he's going to get hammered by the guy he stiff arm. Jason Stevens kept pursuit. They're going to officially, I guess, call that a sack, but it was a pretty exciting looking play and it shows the strength of Carson Palmer. Yeah, now I'm not exactly sure what the play was. Carson Palmer came outside. You see him with the stiff arm and you say he puts on the brakes, but you know what he needs now? Airbags. <laughs> because there was no one to throw to. He got outside, looking downfield, did everything he could, but he had to throw it right to the open field. There was nobody out there. Well, we showed that stat a couple of minutes ago that he has been perfect on third down passing. This is a big one. Busted coverage by UCLA. Two guys covering one, right in the middle of the open field. Palmer over the middle is soured, but he didn't get the first down. And now it's decision time again. It looks like it's about two yards short of the first down. You can see the UCLA defense a bit confused this time. Two guys right here is gonna run out and cover one guy. Hey, there's somebody open, there's somebody open. Let's go get them. Open in the middle of the field could have been a big play. Ball is thrown close enough for one of those fourth and threes again. Hey, that blimp is nice. It is. Yeah. Decision was no decision at all. Fourth down and two, they go again. Remember. Late in the second quarter, UCLA held in much the same spot on the field. Palmer with four wideouts, throws a little slip pass to Billy Miller, and he's got a first down. Well, last time in this situation, the Trojans lined up in a tight formation and ran off tackle. This time, Paul Hackett looked down his list of fourth and shorts and said, I ain't running that first one again. That's I'll right. tell you that right now. I don't care if I got a ninth grade quarterback. I'm throwing the ball on this one. Motion to the outside, roll out. This is a play that almost every NFL team has right now. It's called sprint right or sprint left slot option. You see Denver do it. You see the, you see, uh, the 49ers do it. By the way, Hackett coached for Denver. Uh, Denver knows that this Coast offense. Pass complete to Wendrell Hayes. Just a quick slant, good for about eight yards. And USC's got some working here. Sorry, I said Denver. I meant Kansas City, but everybody knows that play in the NFL, and he's brought it with him. You're right. Kansas State leading by 11. You're right, Brad. They are starting to say, hey, we're behind 27 to 10. What's the difference if we throw the ball and make a mistake? We're fumbling it anyway. I think they started off the game trying to protect Carson Palmer. It didn't work. What you need to do is open it up and take your chances. Time to tell a babysitter to go home. Yep. Second and two. Well, 
He got away again. Incomplete, but what a move by Palmer again with Ramogi Huma coming like a steam engine into the backfield yeah. of USC. Ramogi Huma is saying, who is this guy? I mean, I come in, they time up the blitz again. See him right on him. Carson does a spin and then keeps moving, runs away from it. I'm very surprised now that UCLA was smart enough to stay with their receivers. Gets rid of it, and that was a huge play. Instead of being third and 20, it's going to be third in the yard and a half. And an official's timeout. I'm not quite sure. I mean, they, they brought water onto the field. Must be an injury. Yeah, one, way over on the sideline. They have an injured player. Oh, he's off the field. That's what it is. It's Jason Bell, the cornerback. I think he was the one who was in coverage on Billy Miller on that tip pass in, on, on when Carson scrambled away from him. 8.18 left as they help Jason Bell up. Don't forget tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern, 12 noon Pacific on ABC. We'll bring you the finals of the Chase Championships from Madison Square Garden. It's a season-ending event of the Corel WTA Tour as they compete for a couple million bucks. That's tomorrow on ABC. Yep. Let's watch the end of this play. Coverage right there. Well, he got kicked and leg whipped and everything else, and then comes up holding his left ankle. That's not good. Now they're down out. to two corners. Marcus Sanderson and Ryan Rock. Jason Bell, and they've been playing a lot of nickels off the field. 12th play of the USC drive. On third down. Chad Morton inside. And Morton's got it first and goal. Larry Atkins kept him out of the end zone. The Morton's not big, but when he gets that little hole inside, he can get it going yeah, in a hurry. Absolutely. He's a home run type player. And all of a sudden, the play calling, the offensive line for USC has got into a bit of a groove. We talked about UCLA maybe taking a, you know, kind of feeling 27-10. This game was in hand. But all of a sudden, the game has opened up for USC, and now the running game has opened up. Morton closing in out at 80 yards, 79 yards on the day. Morton behind Powell on first and goal. Second man through, Morton cut back. He got down near the one. Larry Atkins again, number 35, and on the tackle. Those guys have met a lot today. Larry Atkins, a sure tackler. A year ago, he played strong safety slash, almost a rover linebacker type. Moved to the free safety spot this year with the absence of Sean Williams, and they're saying he's one of the best free safeties, and they've had great tradition here. Kenny Easley, Eric Turner, Donnie Rogers, Carnell Lake. I mean, there's been a lot of great ones, and he's picking up right where they were. Second and goal at the one, Papadakis. No signal. And apparently going to be third and goal. Okay, Last time in this situation on second down is when Paul Hackett called the play action pass for a touchdown. But now with it just third in inches, I think he's got two more tries to get a first down here, to get a touchdown. Wisconsin stretches its lead over Penn State and thinking about coming here for a go with the Roses. Third and goal, USC. Papadakis, touchdown. With the extra point, it's only a 10-point football game now. Anybody's game. Petros Papadakis takes it in from a yard out. His seventh rushing touchdown of the year. Off tackle play to the right. Squeezed it in. Petros took it in the low way. Didn't dive over. And that was about the best drive that USC's had in the football game. Key play. Carson Palmer avoiding the sack. That's right. Abrams in for the point after. You see Papadakis from the blimp take it to the end zone. Just a little bit of excitement from one of their more excitable players and one of their most well-liked players on this team. Extra point attempt from Adam Abrams is upcoming. Try to make it a 10 point ball game with 635 left in the third quarter. Abrams up and good.
good. So as Gary said, the Trojans with their best march of the day ends from a yard out and they're back in it. College football brought to you by Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. Burger King, if you ask us, it just tastes better. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. And Tostitos, proud sponsor of the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, college football's national championship. Petros Papadakis acting like he just won a national title, but that one-yard touchdown right in front of the Trojan band in the end zone has made this a game now. Ten points, the difference with six and a half to go third quarter. Ryan Rock from the five. Rock somehow weaved through across the 30 out to the 33-yard line. Darnell Lacey made the tackle. There's a scoring drive, 62 yards, their best one, obviously, of the day. Well, you can recall the early interception that Cade McDowell had, and UCLA offense answered that interception and marched downfield and scored. I think this is the second time in the football game that the pressure has shifted back to the UCLA offense. If they handle it and move down in for a score, I think they'll have a comfortable football game. If USC gets a stop, I think we're gonna go right to the wire. I don't think that I'd maybe not give it to Deshaun Foster and try to reestablish him on the ground. He was the big guy in the first half. It's a draw play, but USC's thinking the same thing, apparently. Abdul Shahid drops Deshaun Foster for a loss. Noticeable difference in the alignment by USC, and a lot of defensive coaches will do that. They will show you a lot of different looks in the first half, but save one defense that you don't have a halftime adjustment to work on. That time USC moved their linebackers up in the line of scrimmage and played a more attacking defense. They had a three and out the first time UCLA had the ball. Let's see if they get another one. Second down at 15. This is the kind of spot you want to try to trap them into. Both wideouts to the near side, and that's Price, the fullback, in motion. Now the slip screen, and that one's getting slipped right down. The guy that blew that play completely up was Ennis Davis, though he didn't make the tackle. He was right waiting on Poley Dixon. Yeah, and then Aaron Williams recognized the play so well. Now you have to believe that the scouting report was, remember the jailbreak screen. When you see Cade McNown fading away and giving too much ground, turn around and try to pick off those wide receivers. And it's exactly what Aaron Williams did that time. Recognized it, made the play. Third and 15. And now we'll see Cade McNown from the shotgun. And so dangerous when he throws on the run in these type of situations. USC, two deep safeties. are going to be playing everything try in front of them in this play. Three wide receivers for McDowell from the spread. Cade stays in the pocket and now throws. And that's almost intercepted by Richard Cook. Quarterback three and out again. Quarterback's biggest mistake when you come up to the line of scrimmage, you have to count out the number of safeties you have to deal with. That time, Cade did not handle the two safeties, threw the ball up for grabs, and he had a bit of pressure from the outside from Abdul Shahid. Just what the defensive doctor ordered for USC back to back three and outs, and now Sailor to punt. Larry Parker waiting on it back at the 30 yard line. USC has blocked four punts this year. They've got eight guys they are going to bring some pressure. Sailor got it away. Parker lets it bounce in front of it. And it'll be taken and down on a hop by UCLA at about the 37 yard line. So USC trailing by 10, but they've got it on offense when we come back in this second half. It's been all USC, 87 total yards of offense to help them get back to the ball game. Coming up later, we'll be picking our Chevrolet most valuable players. In recognition of those athletes, Chevrolet will make contributions to each school's general scholarship fund. So it's first down. And it's play action for Palmer, and he wants it all for Soward. Incomplete. Ryan Rock was covering. That's a good call, too. Jason Bell is not in the football game, so you go at the replacement, Ryan Rock. Ball was thrown a bit short again, and, and you know what happens here is that Soward can't, on that ankle, react Make to the, the ball to the yeah, as, as quickly as he would like to. 
Second down and ten. Miller and Parker, the wide receivers, after Sauer ran that long route. Palmer rolls left and throws. Miller, it's intercepted. Jason Stevens. Second time he's come up with a turnover today. The worst throw of Carson Palmer's day right here. He threw a knuckler early, but he had Billy Miller wide open that time. Threw it about five yards behind the defender. He sprints out to his left. You'll see Billy Miller break to the outside, number three. Look at that open territory. It's about eight yards, maybe about five yards in the wrong direction. Miller wide open on the play. And Jason Stevens says, thank you. That was nice. That's just a bad throw. It had nothing to do with being reading it or anything like that. Just threw it back. And Sean Foster weaves inside. Good for about six yards. Ifani Ojalete made the tackle. Foster was over 100 yards in the first half. Deshaun will be uh, obviously one of the keys to this offense, not only next year, but for years to come. It already is now here late in his freshman season. Came in as a leading rusher. It had been Jermaine Lewis, the leading rusher for most of the season, but Deshaun had the edge coming in, and he has added to the edge to the tune of 107 and two touchdowns today. This time he's hitting the backfield, spins off that got about a yard with his forward progress before he's run down Richard Cook and Daryl Knight in on the stop third down coming up Chris Ferris one of the three offensive linemen Ferris a lot of people are talking about his being ranked maybe the ninth or tenth best player in the draft he's just a junior Ferris Stewart and Myers all three of them have not allowed a sack this football season. That's over 300 throws. Ferris adds what they call knockout blocks, 40 of those over the course of the season, too. He's a good one. Pass skipped off the hands of the intended receiver, Deshaun Foster. That, that one had was, a little steam on it. And it was almost as bad as Carson Palmer's. It was about three yards to the left of the target he was trying to hit. It was a home run pitch for a, bit, a pitcher. You throw one of those where you don't want to aim it. And that's another three and out for this football team. Cade McNown has not had nine plays for the offense, nine total yards. Gary said another three and out, so the interception by Jason Stevens didn't cause any harm, although USC will be losing in field position here. As Sailor got a good kick, Parker's got to let it go, and it might roll dead, and it does. Nice coverage. Great punt that took a back bounce for Sailor and Marcus Anderson down there to down it. A 44 yard kick. And USC deep in their own territory down near the four yard line. Special teams have been helping this UCLA football team. Last week, five field goals, great return yardage by Ryan Rock. And today, the punting game has been excellent. I mean, that is how you put a full team together when you're, if you had a great offense and your special teams come through, you're tough to beat. Sailor's best kick of the day. And that even includes the field goals that he's hit. And now Chad Morton's going to have to line up in his own end zone. So will Marvin Powell, the fullback. And if Palmer throws, he'll be throwing from there. From the four. Morton, cut back. Chad Morton gets him some room to work out to the 13 yard line. Jason Stevens, who just had that interception, comes up with a tackle, but. Morton got nine yards. Chad Morton has improved as a running back. You know, he played wide receiver. I think they tried him on defense for a while. I think he might have found a bit of a home here. Maybe his, his type of a player he will be is like a nickelback type runner coming out of the backfield, an Eric Metcalf type play, football player because he is better at reading his blocks than I remember at the beginning of the season as he's closing in on 100 yards. Closing in on 100 and over 800 for the year. That's not bad considering he missed a better part of two games with injuries. And this time is Kerry nets him a first down. Larry Atkins, Brendan I, and are there to meet him. UCLA. Really the heart and soul of that defense, I, and Badejo and Atkins. 
and as you look at that, UCLA has not been doing it against nobody. You know? That's right. Texas has come on and helped their schedule a bit in that BCS, but Arizona and Oregon, two quality teams. The amazing thing is next week they'll be cheering for USC Absolutely. against Notre Dame, and then UCLA, of course, still has a date against the Hurricanes, who are a much improved Miami club December 5th. So it's a long ways from over. Nice play fake. Palmer comes up, throw into a wide open Powell, a flag down. I think we're going to have a holding to gate what would be a first down on DeMarvin Powell at the 30 yard line. And a little bit of a skirmish at the end. It is holding, and the penalty will take away the first down while we check all of this. Let's check in with John in New York. Brad, time for the Burger King play of the day. Florida and Florida State, the young quarterback Marcus Outs in here. This one might have been picked off on manual. It's tipped into the hands of Peter Warwick. 32 yards for the touchdown for Outs in his first touchdown pass of his career. It's 13-12, Florida State with the lead. Meanwhile, Wisconsin now closing in on that Rose Bowl bid. Right back to you. You got to wonder now, with Wisconsin going to the Rose Bowl, if the Rose Bowl, if there is an at-large football team to choose, let's say UCLA goes to the Fiesta Bowl. Now, if I'm the Rose Bowl people, can I pick Ohio State? Against Wisconsin? That would be. They didn't play each other this year. <laughs> That'll be fun. Yep. So you get everybody from the Midwest coming in. <laughs> Just get the whole Midwest. Just close it down. Just move entire states right. out here. Palmer, quick slant to Billy Miller. That penalty, by the way, against USC for holding was their first penalty of the day, and they come in as the most penalized team in the Pac-10, so they've done a nice job holding that area at bay. It did cost them a first down, though, a couple of minutes ago. Well, you know, Brad, you mentioned that uh, this has been a big two turnover game for UCLA. Five turnovers right now so far in the football game. The 97 team forced 40 turnovers. With the five today, UCLA is at 31, so they're catching up. Can you believe with five turnovers, they're only down 10? Though? That's right. Palmer, going to try to go deep again. Got a man out there, and Parker just couldn't find it. Parker had a couple steps on Ryan Rock. And both of those guys would love to have that play one more time. Yeah, you know, the, the speed made it a, a spot throw this time. Carson Palmer is just going to throw the spot. And as Parker goes to the outside, Rock is clearly beat, but you can see the ball is not thrown anywhere in the area that Parker can get to it. Still a decent game. This is a play that I think Paul Hackett is going to call something safe and say, listen, let's try to get to the fourth quarter with a 10-point game. I don't want to lose it in one play right here. Don't need another turnover, which right. would be number six. Palmer in the pocket. Look out from behind, and down he goes. Ian Badejo. He's always around the football. Brenda with his sixth sack of the year. The coverage caused Carson Palmer to be flushed out of the pocket. Ian Badejo is going to come from the outside over here. Beats it very late. Watch Palmer come in now. Ian Badejo could have swatted that ball. That's what they do in the NFL on that play. That's how a fumble could have occurred. Short track to work for the putter. Oh, almost had it blocked. He took a one step, but it was a slow step. Field it at the 39. And down to the 32. And it was Ryan Rock who fielded the punt, and that's given UCLA tremendous field position to work to start the fourth quarter. We played three. ABC Sports presentation of college football returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. 15 minutes away from their 10th win, and they're thinking bowl championship series, and they're thinking Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. I'll tell you what I'd be thinking right now. Brian Poley Dixon has been quiet. Can they get him the ball? The opportunity is there. It's bump and run to the outside. Nobody deep. Farmer in motion. McDowell's going to throw it. Farmer wanted to throw a double pass, I think. Yep. It was going to be, and they blew the play. They blew the deception on the play. That's exactly what it was going to be. So that one won't be used. Penalty marker down. Bob Toledo keeps his practices open all year except for USC week. He said, you know, it got a bit rough the week before. He said, we got so many people following us now, we are losing a bit of our concentration with as many people. 
practice field becomes Fort Knox this week after <laughs> right. dead ball offsides on the defense five yard penalty first down now that's a tough one because the penalties on the defense but the offense doesn't get to run their trick play USC defensively can do the job in the fourth quarter they're going to need more of that Brad uh UCLA has uh, 19 first down attempts, has run 16 times and only passed three times. On two of those, passes to Farmer went for 42 and 38 yards. They got a first and five to work with here. Coley Dixon all alone again. They go to the fullback, and he only got about a yard. Rail Price got smacked pretty good as soon as he got his hands on the football. And it's Abdul Malik who gets off the bottom of the pile. Antoine Simmons has been quiet in this game, and usually that would not be good news for a defensive football player, but when you play corner, that's a good omen. You don't say a lot about a cornerback. That means not throwing to his guy. Both he and Dalen McCutcheon have had a good game, a solid game. They're not tall enough to match up with these guys, but what they're doing is getting inside of them with their quickness, taking away their pass route before it gets started. Second and four. Send Farmer in motion. Long handoff. And heading toward the end zone and almost got there's Jermaine Lewis. First time the little guy's been able to spring free. Rashard Cook is a tackling machine in the secondary for USC. But on this attempt, Jermaine Lewis made a miss. As you said, it was a long delayed handoff that time, making it look like a pass play. Lewis gets the ball very deep. Kind of like a Chad Morton style and makes Cook miss and almost sticks it into the end zone for a 34 17 game. Now they'll try to do that. It's first and goal just outside the one. Lewis, the tailback, gets the call. Didn't get there. Mark Cassano, one of the first guys to beat him. Wisconsin has beaten Penn State, and the Badgers are coming out here to Pasadena to the Rose Bowl. And there will be some cheese and beer consumed in Madison tonight. Yeah, you can start measuring up the Wisconsin name for the end zone right now. You've got to fit in those letters. So our congratulations to Barry Alvarez and his troops. Foster back in there at tailback. Deshaun Airborne touchdown. His third score of the day. His third on the ground, and that with a touchdown reception gives him four overall for the afternoon. Well, Bob Toledo wanted to be nice and give the ball to Jermaine Lewis for one try and a touchdown. He saw it get stuffed and he said, ah, I'm going with the big guy. Stick it in there. We're thinking Fiesta Bowl. I don't want to be nice to our guys too much. Stewart, Herrera, Ferris just blew him out. Extra point is good. James Kahn looking on. The godfather on the sideline. It's 34 to 17. Their eighth victory in this rivalry. And also trying to keep their record perfect with one more regular season game left. Sailor to kick. Taylor McCutcheon a yard deep. Only got across the 20 to about the 21. Eric Whitfield made the hit on it. And now time running out for USC. They've got to be perfect and get it down the field in a hurry, get a touchdown and get it back because the clock is their enemy. How as ironic. well as those guys were in the powder blue. Yeah, how ironic this football game is for UCLA. Winning this game, I don't think there's never been a game like this in the history of this uh, uh, series where less was at stake, but more was at stake at the same time. They've already got the Rose Bowl bit clinched, yet there's something bigger this year. It's like a new girl moving in on the block. You, know, you had all your girlfriends and somebody else and somebody there. All of a sudden, all the guys on the block want to date them. The Fiesta Bowl is being romanced by college football this year. Absolutely. And a pass to Windrell Hayes is a first down throw, about a 15-yard pickup. Marcus Anderson knocked Windrell out of bounds. 
Well, you know, Paul Hackett may have said it best. He said, even if we upset UCLA and our chances are slim, when's the last time somebody got knocked into the Rose Bowl? That's right. <laughs> and you know, this week, USC had the opportunity to knock UCLA into the Rose Bowl, and next week he might have the opportunity to knock Notre Dame out of the Rose Bowl. Chad Morton, and Morton finds a seam, and Chad Morton's got a first down run into UCLA land at the 44-yard line. Deshaun Foster, no true freshman, has ever scored four touchdowns before he has today. Three on the ground and one on a pass reception. Well, five turnovers are probably the key stat in this football game. Kane McDowell has been very average today. Imagine UCLA winning a game 34 to 17 with a lot of time in the fourth quarter here and your All-American quarterback has played average. Comes a blitz on Palmer. Pass complete to Hayes. And Rock stays there with him and brings him down at the 36-yard line as we check in with John Saunders in New York. John. Brad, what a great call on this play in the Florida-Florida State game. They just had a touchdown called back, so they go for the end around and put it in the hands of the former high school quarterback, Peter Warwick. 46 yards to Ron Dugans for the touchdown. And take a look at this. 20 to 12 now is the lead in the fourth quarter. Meanwhile, Wisconsin is headed to the Rose Bowl after knocking off the Nittany Lions. So Wisconsin finishes their regular season with just one loss. That last week to Michigan. Michigan beaten by Ohio State today. And Scary and I were talking about off the year. John Cooper can't win for losing, can he? Oh, that's true. And you know, give all credit to, to Wisconsin. They played within the rules and they earned their trip to the Rose Bowl. And I think it really surely highlights a weakness in the Big Ten scheduling. Wisconsin and Ohio State did not meet, and that's why Big Ten people want Notre Dame to join the conference. Right now, Ohio State should be playing Wisconsin in a championship game to determine the Rose Bowl win. Well, they can come up with 12 members and split things up. They'll have it like the SEC and the Big 12 and the WAC and some of the others. Windrell Hayes is the main guy on this drive, and he's got it first down again down near the 14-yard line. USC goes on the quick strike attack, which is exactly what we said they needed to do. They need to pounce it in here, get their 24th point, and then try to get it back as quickly as they possibly can. Well, you're right about that. I mean, the football game's not over, but I mean, everybody on that UCLA football team right now is looking at that clock. When you're ahead, and you got that, this is the game, you're just saying, come on, clock, move. Career high for Windrill Hayes with six catches. Want to throw a screen back to Morton. Had to make a heck of a catch. Yeah, and then tried to get the motor restarted. By that time, Ramogi Huma had caught up with him. <laughs> you know, Brad, when it's funny how the clock looks. When you're ahead in this situation, the clock goes so slow. But when you're behind like this, the, the minutes go by faster than, you know, a, a long distance call on a cell phone. <laughs> I mean, it just goes by. You look up there and say, oh my goodness, that thing is going fast. The defense up there on that scoreboard, obviously, for the UCLA fans. There's the clock Gary's talking about that shows a little over 11 to go. Seventh play of the UC, uh, USC drive. Palmer, blitz cup that's picked up. And now he goes down. Ian Badejo again got it from the backside. Boy, that kid's a big playmaker. He sure is. He had the two sacks against Oregon to seal that football game. Watch Chad Morton, though. About a 155-pound tailback right here. Watch him come up and clean the blitz inside. Chad Morton sees the blitz. He's back at tailback, so he has to hit it on the run. Ball is snapped, goes by the quarterback, and takes out the first rusher. But Ian Mendejo comes from the other side and clamps it down. By the way, that's our blimp blitz. That's right. For those of you watching from way up on top. Third down of, at 13. Give a lot of credit to Chad Morton standing in there and blocking those linebackers like that. UCLA is going to bring it again on Palmer. He rolls, sets up, runs out of trouble, and right back into trouble. This time it's Anthony Fletcher, who finally is draped all over him. Tell you what happened on that play. R.J. Soward and I think it was Antoine Harris tripped over each other. Soward does not have the quickness. Watch him, he can't get off the line of scrimmage. Comes out, that's where the ball was gonna go. Comes out and runs right over the tight end, Lonnie Ford, 
the two primary receivers fall down on the play, Carson Palmer has to eat the football. And two Bruins took themselves out, as a matter of fact. Kenyon Coleman and Ian Badejo ran into each other. Ian Badejo's gone off the field. Coleman hasn't gotten up yet. Yeah, Kenyon Coleman was hurt earlier in the football season for UCLA. They just got him healthy about three or four weeks ago. So let's see where it happened. Oh. He got leg whipped just as he let go of Carson Palmer that time, about the middle of the bottom of your screen. Friendly fire. <laughs> That's right. That was a collision between Coleman and I am Badejo. They both stayed down for a while. And Coleman still slow to get up. He comes in. One of the sack leaders on this team and up and okay now. Meanwhile, it's fourth down and what, about 15? Fourth and 15, and right now Nick Aliotti is telling his defense, stop him, and we're in the hunt for the national championship. And Bob Toledo is not going to mention my name after the game. <laughs> and as Bob Toledo told us, he said the sigh of relief after the Washington game when everybody said, you know what, we're in the Rose Bowl. And then he said that went away in about a day. And they said, you know what the hell, let's go for the bag of chips. Yep. And that's, that's a right. Tostitos go Fiesta Bowl. Go for the Tostitos. He said he helps it. He thinks it helps us refocus to have something else to play for besides the Rose Bowl. Today they're playing very, very well. Even though their Heisman Trophy candidate quarterback has been anything but perfect, they still lead by 17 with 9.40 left. By Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. Valvoline, you can always tell the guys who use Valvoline. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Microsoft Web TV Service. Web TV, watch what's possible. 17 down, Gary. They're going to go on fourth yeah. and what, 15? Well, we talked about it all through the break, and I know Paul Hackett thought about it, but I would kick the field goal right here. 17 down, I'd want to make it a 14-point game. Palmer sets up, hit as he throws, but he got it incomplete. Mastinelli had his hands on it. He could not hold it. Ian Badejo put the hit on. Eric Whitfield was in coverage, and Ian Badejo will dance his way to the UCLA sideline. Costianelli could have made this catch. The senior to the outside, one-on-one -on -one coverage with Whitfield, who was a strong safety at the beginning of the game, and you see what, at the beginning of the year, excuse me, and you can see why he was big easily to the inside that time. Could have made the catch, it was a good throw. It looked almost like he got caught in between strides and the ball arrived so fast he just couldn't get his hands out there. And the reaction of the coach on the sideline who had the right call maybe, you know, but everybody's got to do their job. Brad, it was the right call. It was properly executed by the quarterback, but it still wasn't the right strategy. Pick up of about four for Keith Brown this time in the backfield. Aaron Williams made the tackle. So now it's still a 17 point difference and it's back in the hands of the guys in the gold helmets. Coming into this football game, a win by USC could have taken a, a nice debut season by Paul Hackett into a, a great debut season. With a win here today, and it doesn't look like they're going to be able to pull it off. Second down at six. It's going to take some turnovers or something now. And here's Keith Brown bursting into the secondary. Out to the 38-yard line, first down UCLA. And on to New York and John Saunders. John. Brad, Kansas State in a battle with Missouri and Corby Jones, the reason why. My partner Todd Blackledge said if he could throw it, this would be a tough game. Corby with a touchdown pass to Dossman there, 20 yards. They missed the two-point conversion, but it's a two-point contest. Brad. So a good one, Bruin, in Big 12 country here in the Pac-10. Undefeated UCLA trying to run their streak to 20 in a row. You know, if I was doing that other game, Brad, what I'd say, kick the extra point, make it a one-point game with 12 minutes to go because a field goal by Kansas State makes it a five-point game. Good point. We were talking about here, too, just uh, the field goal situation a couple of moments ago. If somewhere along the line got to pick up that field goal to forge a tie in this thing. Yeah, because two eight-point touchdowns is not going to help you. It was a three-possession game. You got to look up there and get one of those possessions out of the way. Fourth and 15 is tough. Now, it was almost pulled off, but I still didn't like the strategy. Second down and eight. Interesting. 19 straight wins. 
14 in the conference and nine at home. You know, and Caden McNaught has not had a great football game today, but he is still my pick as the All-American quarterback in college football. And there's some great ones this year. But when you go two years playing at the level he has and winning these football games and scoring the points this UCLA offense has with the pressure he's had for two straight years, he's my All-American quarterback. I don't think Cade McNown will win the Heisman Trophy. No, I'm not sure so. he'll finish in the top three, but somewhat like last year with Brian Greasy, you almost get the feeling that Cade McNown maybe is the most valuable player in college football, though not the Heisman Trophy winner. You're, you're right, and that, that's how I look at him, too. He just refuses to be beat. And I'll tell you right now, if this game was 34-31, you'd see a different quarterback out there. I think he's going to win one of those three, though. <laughs> maybe a bunch of them. I don't know. Seven minutes left. It's third and nine. I don't know if he will. There's so many top quarterbacks right now. And this time he's got a first down when he had to have one to Farmer. Brad, that's the first time in three games of doing UCLA football that I've seen Cade McNown roll to his right and, and, complete, a and pass. complete a pass. That was a buster for the defense. All of the talk, all of the scouting reports, as you look at all the top names of quarterbacks up out there this year, Bishop, Couch, Jermaine, they're all good. Donovan McNabb isn't even up there. Think about how good that guy is. He might be one of the top four quarterbacks in the draft. Danny Farmer catches one more pass. He'll go over 1,000 yards receiving. He's about four yards shy right now if they use him again today. He's in motion right now toward the ball. And now back to the ground they go. And close to the 45 is Jermaine Lewis. And they just want to use as much clock as they can, and it keeps ticking away against USC. 6.45 and counting. Well, right now, a game like this in past years, UCLA students would be holding up roses. Now they're eating Tostitos. <laughs> Second down and seven. Ken O'Brien still talking to his young quarterback on the sideline who hopes to get another chance. And if I was Carson, I'd say, Ken, go talk to my receivers. Is there anybody open last time I tried to throw? On a second and seven. Lewis, no gain, maybe a loss of a half yard. Darrell Knight made the tackle. And don't you know right now, Bob Toledo would love this to be the last game of the football season. They still have got to go down to Miami. That hurricane, the hurricane team and the hurricane that washed that game out right. is now going to be in two weeks. And a game that Bob Toledo had originally scheduled to put that team in there on a Thursday to prepare for that game because of finals at UCLA. The team won't get to go there until Friday. Right now, Miami played as well as they played in about five years. That's a very dangerous crew they're going to have to beat. Now, almost picked off. Mark Pisano got his hands on it, couldn't hold it. And UCLA will have to give it up. The guy's not happy. <laughs> You know, you always, you always want to win when you're a quarterback, but you still want to play well. I mean, you know, winning is one thing. You want to play well to win, though. You don't want just everybody else doing well, and you're the, the weak link. Chris Saylor set to punt. The one he dropped inside the 20 was the last time he kicked down to about the four-yard line. See if USC can get closer. They've been getting close to his punts today. He gets this one away with ease. Larry Parker fields at the 14 and loses his foot up. Five minutes, 22 seconds for UCLA away from 10 and 0. BC. Still down 17 and running out of time are the Trojans. Palmer wants to flare it out. And what a great job defensively by Ian Badeja. We wouldn't even let Morton get out in his pass pad. Yeah, great read that time. He had the first back out his side. If Matt Morton goes his way, he takes him. If he goes the other way, he rushes the quarterback. Alcho Rico, Rich Eight, huh? USC has never lost to UCLA. And you're ending in the eighth. Well, right, 98 going to snap yeah. that. Ouch. Just a regular American ouch on that one. <laughs> now, the streak has been close, though, of the seven wins. All but one decided by a touchdown or less, but this one looks like it's going to be a little wider margin unless USC does something in a hurry. And Ian Badejo's got him again. Man, man.
He had a career-high 12 tackles last week against Washington to seal that Rose Bowl win. He had back-to-back -back sacks in overtime against Oregon, and today, playing in his last game against the crosstown rival, he's saying, I ain't leaving with a loss. Kid playing at Cabrillo Junior College, and their coach, Steve Cox, is a friend of Bob Toledo's. I think I'd, I'd send Steve Cox, exactly. I don't know, a case of beer if I was Bob Toledo. This guy is just always around the football. And he's in his track stance again. Palmer down the middle. That one is caught by Bostinelli. Yeah, Bostinelli says, oh, thanks. If I could have caught the other one, we could have scored a touchdown. But that was a nice catch. Coming back, ball was perfectly thrown. But what is it, fourth down? Fourth and about five or six, yeah. Yep. Pick up a 14, but well short of the first. And they go without the huddle. Might be the last chance right here. And it is intercepted. It's Larry Atkins. Atkins out of bounds at the two. His 12th turnover caused. Nick Aliotti says, I'm back. Larry Atkins at time started running over there before the ball was snapped. Atkins will go and read it. Watch him. He starts going, starts going, reads it all the way, and just picks that baby off. He followed Carson Palmer's eyes. Larry Parker was the attendant receiver. And the senior says, I saw you play in high school, Carson. It's a little different out here. Who knows, that might be a fourth award-winning interception. He's on the list and certainly has climbed it a little bit maybe with that play. First and goal at the one. Foster the tailback. Fumble. Fumble. And did it go over the end line? What was Dalen McCutcheon doing? I don't know. That was a free ball. UCLA, I mean, if UCLA would have fell on that, that would have been a touchdown. A little bit of a brain lock by Dalen McCutcheon. You can clearly see it's a fumble. McCutcheon says, let it go out of bounds. Oh, my goodness. Rashard Cook's the guy that put the hit on. And then everybody backs away, Cusano and Dalen McCutcheon. Well, on my All-American team, Larry Atkins is one of the safeties along with Anthony Poindexter. I think they're the best two safeties in college football. A great tackler, came up with a big interception, and all of a sudden, the ball is through the end zone. It's a touchback, obviously, but the ball wasn't fumbled. Nayla McCutcheon, one of the guys on that Thorpe list, and uh, he would like to do that last play over differently. Well, and luckily for him, it, it turned out fine. He's had such a good, solid football game. He hasn't given up any big plays but one. Here comes Ian Badejo. Boy, Brent McCaffrey is going to be happy when this football game's over. They've tried Rome Douglas. They've tried McCaffrey. Nobody can handle this guy. And again, in the secondary, coverage, coverage, coverage all day. UCLA has been in the hip pocket of these hip pocket of these USC receivers. Nobody to throw to. But I am Badejo says, I don't care. You don't have to cover him. I'll get him in two seconds. Windrell Hayes catches a pass, but it's fairly harmless. Out to the 24-yard line. Such a weird sight being here. UCLA winning this football game. You see Kansas State coming back to ice that one away almost. Nine-point game. Bound, tipped and intercepted again. Yeah, he was out of bounds though, Julius Williams. Julius Williams came down with his foot out of bounds. Such a weird scene to see. This is usually a Rose Bowl type game when everybody would be waving roses and everybody, everybody knows the rules now. You have to give the fans credit. Julius Williams, a true freshman, coverage that time and uh, I guess the cupboard isn't bare, is it? No. <laughs> Matt Welch coming off, holding his left hand, it appears. One of the... Yeah, it's, it's probably his left arm or shoulder, too, the way he's holding it. And now it's fourth down, USC. <laughs> yeah. Nick Aliotti's troops have played pretty well. They're going to take a timeout here. 
Coach Nick Aliota came from the NFL, came back out of Oregon, coached with Bob Toledo before, but thanks for that timeout. We needed to break ourselves. Three minutes, in fact, 2.54, all that remains. Pass with Darrell Hayes goes up and gets it. And he's become the lead receiver for USC today in the absence of R.J. Sauer. Not a Heisman Trophy type performance today by Cade McNown. Yeah, I think he's kissed that one off already. I don't think he cares about the Heisman Trophy. Much like, as you mentioned, I think it's a great comparison. I think Brian Greasy, the way he led Michigan a year ago, I just think Cade's a better athlete than Brian. Brian may be a little better pocket passer than Cade. Palmer back in the pocket, firing. Complete to Billy Miller, broke a tackle. And got close to the first down, about a yard short. Billy Miller playing in his final matchup in this long time series. The bottom line is, though, you can't turn it over six times. And the points that came off the turnovers to Sean Foster with four touchdowns, Ayam Badesia with four sacks. And also in that first half, UCLA's average starting field position was right about in midfield. Yep. Can't do that against an offense like this. Quick throw. And Hayes got a first Hayes. down. Paid, paid, paid for it. Paid for those four yards. That was expensive territory there. Took a shot from Marcus Anderson, among others. Well, Cade McNown is going to win four games in a row, first time in history against crosstown rival USC. And Carson Palmer will never do it. Nope. <laughs> so we know there's a whole other era there yeah. before somebody can pull that trick. Huskies leading Washington State. Palmer back to throw. And a loft one long. And too long. A nice spot pass down there near the five-yard line for Larry Parker, but he had two guys on him. Marcus Sanderson again doing a good job of cutting those receivers off and giving the receiver no room to go catch the ball. And the only place that could have been caught was out of bounds. You know, I, you, you kind of equate this game to the Michigan-Ohio State football game, and John Cooper had that streak that haunted him, 1-8-1 and one against Michigan, and now USC 0-8 against UCLA, crosstown rival. And I think, really, it's been a little tougher on Ohio State than it has been for USC. Ohio State had so many opportunities to take a national championship, and Michigan knocked them off, and their coach, John Cooper, was there for the whole run. USC has changed coaches, and I think they have new hope down the line. Five-yard penalty. Replay the down. Check some of the other scores. Air Force now will meet BYU in the WAC title game. Virginia Tech huge on Rutgers today. Talked about Wisconsin's win over Penn State, Ohio State over Michigan. We saw Stanford leading Cal in the game. I guess they got a new mascot, a new tree there. Oh, really? It took a long time to get their tree back, but I understand they pulled the limbs off that one and started a new tree mascot anyway. All right. <laughs> Haven't seen much of Traveler. He's here today, but he's in the bowels of the stadium, I'm afraid. And the throw to the tight end is complete. Antoine Harris, and he had the ball stripped away by Jason Stevens, and the officials have not given an indication whether or not that is UCLA ball. It is. Boy, seventh turnover of the football game. We've named this one Foster's Freeze. It's a chain of ice cream stores around here, but today it was Deshaun Foster who led the football team along with that defense that forced seven turnovers. What, five of them fumbles? Jason wow. Stevens comes up with his third turnover of the day. And if, I, if I'm not correct, I think four of them have been after a pass completion yep. in the football game. That one was a completion to Antoine Harris, the tight end, and he just had it ripped away from him. So now it's icing time with a couple minutes left. And Lewis pops outside. Rashard Cook knocked him out, but not before Lewis picks up the first down. 34-17, Paul Hackett knew he could not, could not turn the ball over. You see it, first 10 games, 10. See, that's a good average, 10 for 10. One for five, that's not a good average. No. One for five, it's no good. Everybody knows that. Paul Hackett, there's no strategy on that game plan. That can help you when you turn the ball over seven times. And at the Coliseum, a week from tonight in prime time, they won't be able to turn it over that many times against Notre Dame either. Or they will be on the short end of that one as well. Lewis 
Off left tackle, got a yard or two. That's about it. If time permits, don't forget to stick around for the thrifty car rental post game report featuring scores and highlights from across, uh, across the country with John and Todd. Boy, what a, what a downer it would be for UCLA if they end up undefeated and don't go to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl and play, and, and, I'm no, and nothing against Wisconsin, they're a good football team, but play a lower ranked team than Ohio State in the Rose Bowl, that's gonna be tough to take for the UCLA followers. The BCS standings coming in, UCLA was number two. And they're beating a pretty good football team here today. Kansas State trying to beat a good one in Missouri. So they'll shake it all up. And we'll see what comes out of that BCS pot again uh, tomorrow night and Monday. And as Gary said, the edge that Kansas State and Tennessee will have if they continue their run, they'll play in championship games in their respective conferences, something UCLA can do nothing about. USC can do nothing about what's taking place here at the Rose Bowl. Mr. McNown, Mr. Borges, Mr. Toledo. <laughs> this will be eight in a row, four straight for the quarterback. How far have they come from when we first saw Bob Toledo down in Texas after he had lost his first two games a year ago? He looked, remember he threw his team off the practice field before the Texas game? McNown fakes a pitch and now comes out here on his own. Rashard Cook. Brought him down, but that just adds an exclamation point to what yeah. is set to be win number 20 in a row for the Bruins. I, I wonder if he didn't do that on his own, because I'll tell you what, Richard Cook tried to put him out. And Cade McNown, if he would have got put out on this play, I think this was a bit of a bush play, to tell you the truth. The game was over, and Cade McNown rubbed it in. That's right, get him, knock him out. That one will be remembered by the Trojan players in the future. It is the eighth straight victory in the series. And still it's perfect for Bob Toledo. 10-0, 20 straight. They keep their national championship hopes alive. 34-17 over USC.